Welcome to Araxinal, a realm where the line between the wondrous and the horrific has been irreparably blurred. The Deadlands, a shadowy expanse of decay and corruption, continue to creep outward, infecting the world in a campaign of undeath and insanity covered with an insidious miasma. Yet forget this ma miasma for a moment. The true terror is the eldritch monstrosities lurking in the depths. One such abomination, the dread ghoul devourer, a nightmarish assemblage of sinew and malice capable of tearing even the most seasoned adventure asunder. This grotesque behemoth, like others of its ilk, stands as a sentinel of doom, guarding unholy secrets and treasures that could either save or doom Araxidal. This is another chapter into the tales of Araxidal, the Deadlands. I am Tom, your guide and tormentor, as we descend further into abomination and chaos. I am. When we last left our heroes, they had plunged into the subterranean nightmares of the Deadlands, surviving the labyrinthine chaos beneath the crumbled city of Garvior. They braved encounters with haunting slore beasts and momentarily paused to regather their resolve and strength. What lied ahead is a world far removed from reason or reprieve. They witnessed the food chain of ghouls and confronted horrid abominations and sentinels facing even a dread ghoul devourer. Against all odds, they vanquished it, but not without cost. Maimed, but unbroken, they now find themselves within the lab of the Reaper, known as Embryos Biltane, a place teeming with untold secrets, as they steel themselves to unearth the mysteries of this dark sanctum. The air is heavy with grim anticipation of what further horrors they may uncover. Here are the brave or perhaps reckless souls who've dared to journey further into the realm's most forsaken corners. I play Pansac. Uh, Pansac's an orc. Um, he likes food. Hello, it's the bird named Chirp. What can Chirp do? Fly, cook, hide, shoot, find root, and much more. Find out today. Hey everyone, I hope that you're doing well and good. My name is Nox, and I play Eldros Mike, Master of Druid, was stuck in petrification for 200 years, and now it is in a world that he doesn't know and is soon to find out its intricacies. Within the Deadlands, he's trying to go ahead and help this group of adventurers get to their destination and at the same time discover what happened to his old home, to the life that, well, he wish he had back. Oh, he's an Astro Elf, uh, Circle of Stars Druid. The themes fit together. You'll see. Um, I play Terencio, the dashing pirate warlock um i'm mostly just here for the loot i don't actually uh like any of these people i promise don't call me out on that um and i'm just trying not to die the usual If you're new here and want to join us in this dark descent, don't forget to follow or subscribe to our returning victims. Welcome back to the abyss. Let's now delve into the darkness. Where we last left off, a uh, question. Did we just finish combat at this moment? Yes. 
So you will... just recovering from combat, blood dripping from Kazrius, Eldros as well. You see that the moment that everything kind of settles, the adrenaline kind of drops, you see that Eldros looks down on his foot, and you see that it has been cleaved, just taken apart, and half of it is just completely gone. Blood sp still splattering upwards as he kind of like collapses to the ground and says, like the nine hells, that hurts, oh, fuck, as he's like um, holding it very tightly. I'm gonna walk over to my friend over here, pat him on the back, and then hand them my handy dandy limb restore ring. Uh, I don't think I need this anymore, but you probably will need it for your foot. He doesn't even go ahead and say thank you. He just takes it from your hand and like slips it into his finger like as quickly as he can. And he just <laughs> stop the bleeding. <laughs> Cast cure wounds on himself. Does that ring hurt when it re grabs? Uh, damn, did it hurt when my bones were growing in? You can decide. Hmm. <laughs> Let's say maybe I was in so much pain with the full exhaustion, and or not full exhaustion, but you know, the the terrors that I didn't notice the pain, if there was any. But I'm sure whatever pain he would feel does not compare to the pain of missing a limb. You just see that Eldris's hands just light up with faint healing magic, nothing strong like his other spells, just to close up the wounds and make it stop bleeding. And he's like, <laughs> um, it's going to be enough for now. I... Is is the chunk of his foot still around? No, it was swallowed. Consumed. Hey, at least it was only half of your foot. Yeah. That is, that is not something that is very comforting. No, I agree. That <laughs> I look at Terrence, you. I, I know you haven't lost a limb yet, but uh, I do think he's in pain. He goes ahead and like slowly stands up, hobbling on his like heel foot, um, trying to take pressure, but it hurts too much. It's like, it's like I'll be hobbling for the rest of our time. You could uh, turn into a bird, right? I could. I could, but it expands my energies. Oh. I'm not going to do it for comfort or anything. Uh, is there Either a... Way, when, I, when I return back to my form, it is still going to be there. Do you have a stick that you can lean on? Or do I, I can find you one if you don't have one? No, I, I, got, my, I got my spire. It's fine. You see that he's already like leaning on his spire as he's holding it. Okay. Um, I interpret is a little confused when he pulls out his backpack uh, cold. He says, uh, this thing is generally cold, so I don't know if you need like a, an ice pack, maybe you can use this as one, but uh, I don't know what you can do to keep it from the infection, if there is infection here. My, my magic will mitigate for now. Although I am not as thrilled of having a necromantic foot like you with your hand. Oh, um, uh, okay, fair. Maybe you can... Maybe if you keep it in a boot, the mist won't touch it, and it'll be fine. It's technically in a boot. I just need to sew it and stitch it up together. I, 
I don't know the specifics of whatever magic made your hand like that, so I'm just going to assume that it is going to happen to me as well. Whatever measures that I take to prevent it won't help. It's magic, not natural sciences. But in any case, this is the great lab, huh? The Reaper. I hope it was worth traveling. And what's up with these guys? As you look uh, over oh. um, at uh, two of the ghouls, one of them off in the corner, horribly maimed. It looks like their body was stitched and burned with acid scarring over what might have been a normal body at one point has been stitched back together with other arms to kind of make it still humanoid. You can tell from this distance that the body has been severely damaged, experimented on. Um, the other, in the cage, as you look over at it and it looks you in the eye, you can see the anger in its eye as it starts randomly just... Um, flailing its arms out, trying to get out of this cage, reacting violently to you even looking at it. Somebody spicy. Um, maybe we should just put these guys out of their misery. Good. I don't think they're going to be very useful or helpful. I'm not against that. You can't talk to them, right? Um, are they animals? Animals. The one in the corner watched your fight, didn't engage, and it's just spectating, watching you now. Uh, can I? I look at the one in the corner, and I say, "Hey." You in the corner. Can you understand me? Yeah. What did speaking ever do? Gargoyle's gone. Lost. Oh. Wait. He said Gargoyle. Maybe it was the city that we're going to. Yeah. So you were you were a citizen of the Garabula? I once was before I was and the voice kind of trails off. They go into a glaze and speak up again. Um all is void. All is empty. Nothing awaits. All is lost. Um, I don't know if these guys have any useful information. It seems like they've been stuck in a cage for, what did you say, 200 years? You see the one who is violently responding to you suddenly starts speaking. You hear his voice. Um, it comes in this disembodied sort of dual voice all at once. Useful. It would be useful for you to come closer. Let me feast on your flesh. Um, he just starts violently um, making sounds, um, growling and whatnot. The gods were weak. I can consume you. I am the perfect, perfect embodiment of everything the Reaper had imagined. But the other one was stronger. Oh, if you let me out of my cage, I can kill. I will kill you first. Drink on your blood. Revitalize my broken energy. But I've killed, like, a bajillion of you already. 
That is only because they have caged me. Could I not kill you? Why are you in the cage? No. Because they fear me. Just as you must. Yeah, look at the bars. Are the bars like metal or are they some kind of strong material? The bars are made of metal. If you were that tough, you could break those bars. Yeah. With your head. <laughs> they must have did some infernal type of magic to seal me in here. It's called I could break those bars with my head. Uh, I guess you're not that tough. Well, if you can, please come. I don't want, I don't want to. No. I want to ask the other one. Hey, why can you talk and all the other ones outside can't? Um, all right, you get this. Um, the voice kind of seems to shift again. Oh, I can talk. Why can't the others talk? Well, that's because the Reaper has done his experiments on us and given us some form of sentience. Well... Well, firstly, intentional experiment done by him. Many of us here, all of us, I believe, can talk. Do you have a name? Oh, the old names, names, names matter. And his voice kind of fades off um, again. What does my name matter anymore? All is lost. My family dead, tortured. But I don't recall. Oh. That's very sad. Um, when was the last time you saw this Reaper guy? Mm. Months or days. They blend together. You see um, one in another cage. He has his hands on the bar. The door is unlocked but isn't coming out. And it's just kind of watching you all a little bit curiously. Okay. I'll ask that one. Why aren't you as violent as your friend? Oh, my... My friend, um... Yeah, the other guy. Well, I... I can't quite say, but... I seem to have maintained just one soul, I suppose. But the friend in the cage, well, they were experimented on for enhancing violent tendencies. Oh. I am merely just one of the experiments of being able to reform myself. I, I had some friends. Um, I hate to ask, but have you encountered any other so they can talk outside oh, yeah. of here. Bobbert and uh Nigel. Yeah. They're alive. Yeah, Wait, but they're yeah. all bones. They're alive in the sense. Well, I, what am I saying? I just cling to the hope that I might be alive. I I know them. Um they they were seemed to get out of their cage. It wasn't locked and they just walked out. Um, but uh, this isn't locked. You can walk out. Uh, yes, but I was afraid that maybe there'd be no point. So they managed to make it out. I won't. No. Can I roll insight on him? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Oh, but I'll say. Wait. You knew them? Didn't they? Didn't they say they were around here like a million years ago? Hmm. Well, oh, oh, um, I think all of these well, guys have been down here for two hundred years. I no, I no, but been didn't here for a while. Didn't Bobbert specifically say a million? No, he didn't. I don't uh, think he so. Said oh, okay. 
Gotcha, there, man. Um, it appears that the ghoul, while you don't really know their intentions, they're, you know, kind of playing as shy. They're not being aggressive. Definitely different. And from what you can understand, they can be trusted. But they're also a ghoul, so that's your call. I'll, uh, I'll answer his question. No, they, 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 they didn't make it out. They've been kind of going in circles for, I don't know, however long they escaped, probably a hundred years or something. Really? Yeah. Even Nigel? He, yeah, them both was... together have been going in circles. But uh, all I can say is uh, he seemed pretty smart when he was in here. Uh, I, How could that be? His brain ent was entirely intact. I oh, well, they're so all bones. Things. Can they take their heads off? I I can as well. Um. <laughs> Whoa! Really? Yes, it, we were part of the same group of experiments. I got put in this cage with that one. And he looks over and points over at one who's just sitting. Patiently, quietly in the corner. Um, th their cage was left unlocked, not, not ours. I, you wouldn't know if there's a secret treasure room, would you? Um, there's well, plenty more rooms further in, it looks like. What I can say is uh, the experiment room is right over to the south left down there. I hadn't been in any of the others. I, I will say that whenever the Reaper visits us, he comes out of this hallway directly to the south. Never seen him come from anywhere else. What does he look like, by the way? Well, um, typically he has his hair tied back, white. Uh, if I were to consider something human again, he might look like how I might have wanted to look with my face. Special clothes, Elvish. weapons. Very nice clothes. Carried a large scythe on his back. A cloak. Often, sometimes, he would wear a hood. And if I were to recall, I would say he didn't always look the same, like it was someone else, but it was him. Not sure how to describe it. Weird. But you're, you're saying, Nigel... Bob, they're still out there. Undead. Yeah, they're right outside. Yep. They were too afraid to come in. Well, maybe there is hope for me to leave, but what? How have they been trapped? I don't understand. Nigel was brilliant. I I was his apprentice. My past life, oh. uh, before we were captured, they can't seem to remember anything. Uh, oh, that's horrible. I, I don't want to become like them. You are already like them. But, but I, I have my memories, my past life. I, I, I know of what I, I did. Be mistaken by your supposed sense of self. The others, they don't have the fortitude or perhaps the hindsight to tell you this. But whatever life they viewed near outside of this very cage, it's gone. It was gone the moment that you were transformed into this thing. I don't know why you would to go out there because there is nothing 
out there. Nothing but the same type of torture and death only magnified by dozens of creatures looking to re rip each other apart until they find life. Dozens is kind Wait. of an understatement. Even he agrees. So, quite frankly, I understand your wants to come out of the outside world. And even if it be managed to get out of the Deadlands, you are something that doesn't belong in the natural world. Whoever comes across De you... Wait. De 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 Deadlands? What, what are you talking about? The world is gone. No. Don't we have a map? No, no, no. No, 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 no. We have a map, right? No, no. Anzac, hold on. No. Tell me right now. Tell me. Garavior. No. Garavior. No, no. City nearby. No, this can't. This can't. This can't be. This can't. No, please stop. Stop. Listen. You can see it for yourself whenever in dozens of years that you spent here and finally get out. You can see it for yourself. My recommendation is that within the toxicity that is the Deadlands, which is gone, you'll end up destroyed by other monsters. If you get out of the Deadlands, you'll end up destroyed by life that will want you dead. Best case scenario? Find all the other ghouls that might remain within these mazes and make your home here. You won't be afforded this type of mercy anywhere else. I... I had... I have a family. I... I you see, I... I... I was... Elvish... Before this. They'd still be alive. They're still out there. I just... Well, you see, the problem with that is uh, Ralanon existed, right? Yeah. Well, pretty much everyone around Ralanon checks for last names, and if you had the last name of someone in here... Well, what? Then, then, then they kind of... Well, I didn't, I didn't find out what would happen, but I, I didn't think it would be anything good. So even if they did live, then uh, good luck finding them. Oh, hope there is, is no lost. Oh, hope is lost. The one thing that I cling by, the hope that my family might still be alive. It's not it's with your name. Well, do what was your family's name? Brie. Brie. That is our family name. Can I make a brief like, history check? See if I know any Brie's off the top of my head. Sure. Maybe it's the only Brie that I know is a cheese. <laughs> Brie. But yeah. <laughs> You recall a very nice cheese. Yeah, I, I'm just at first I was gonna bring up hey, maybe there's like a famous brie that we know, but no, cheese is all that comes in the trip slots. Look, you've been down here two hundred years holding on to that, and you're gonna let some half wood orc. And this, uh, no hey. offense, no offense, Nansa. And this, um, frankly, strange druid just convince you to give up in a few minutes. Um, it's not about, it's not about giving up, Terence. It will not give false hope to this creature that it will survive. Anywhere. Even yeah. if you find your family, quite frankly, you could never stay with them. 
That's why you told him how it was. Because, for the love of all the gods, he is a monster. Every creature that we have found that is a ghoul, entrails hanging from their abdomen, spines and necks ripped apart to sunder, experiments created for purposes beyond our capability to imagine. They're not alive. They never have been. The moments that they were killed, it's done. They're walking corpses, their souls somewhere else entirely. Probably kept in a phylactery or kept somewhere for energy purposes or magical purposes, whatever, or they passed on. We're not speaking to people, we're speaking to husks that hold on to whatever memories, never to forge new ones. If cannot, cannot live in this world. Then how does he remember stuff that happened since he's been in the cage? Yeah, he's he's a very convincing husk. And you're gonna be naive enough to let yourself be convinced? Open your eyes. He is the most successful experimentation out of what? Dozens? The exception doesn't make a rule for people. I'm done with your foolishness of trying to put yourself in the shoes of literal nothing. Look at them. Truly look at them. They are done. Either it is adaptation to this new environment, the Deadlands, but that's it. I will not give false hopes even to these creatures. Now either kill them or be honest with them. I have to. I don't think it's a false hope. It seems like his soul is still there. I. I. But. What, what, what? He is having a major existential crisis. Um, there's this stuttering and mumbling coming from this ghoulish figure who can't seem to grasp onto words. I knew an owl with a very nice hand. He was a necromancer. What does that have to do with anything? Well, that hand seemed really nice. He talked to it. I, I blink in confusion it a little seems bit. Like... There's no explanation. If this is clearly not a normal goal. If he can still form memories and things like that. Well, I have I a mean, better question. How do you know so much about necromancy, Aldros? As a druid, you study of the natures of life and death. Out of all the creatures in the cosmos, whether that be fiendish aberrations, celestials, that form up whatever small concept that, they, that we have of the planes, what we understand wholeheartedly is that they have a sense of self. Every devil that you encounter is alive, something behind their eyes, something akin to a soul. They have their own agency their own judgment when it comes to the choices that they make. Undeath is a perversion of all creation. Not only mortal life, not only the life that we live as a society, it is a literal perversion of the natural order in every plane. 
the same yeah. type of hate that we have for the same type of understanding that we have that undeath is like a cancer that spreads and eats at everything. Every other place has it too. Yet all of these tools have shown agency. I mean, it's hold on. I'm okay for killing threats, but I guess why haven't we killed Bobrick yet, then, and Nigel? Didn't they show agency by leaving this place I on went, their own? I went ahead and recommended to kill them both and to get rid of them. Not to you, directly. Kazri's, but it was already in my mind's eye. Uh, Kazri speaks up and agrees um, that... I'm not sure why you wanted to work with them in the first place. I think they were just a threat. We should have killed them. And I'm not opposed to killing all of them here or just getting out, get what we want, and leave. I think they're nice. I mean, Trip is a little, like, he's thinking, because on, on the one hand, he values survivability, and if there's a threat, and his friends say there's a threat, then eliminate the threat. But also, Bobber has been funny, <laughs> so he is, he is really thinking about it. I don't think there are any threat, well, except the one in the cave. Yeah, we can kill that one. Hence why I said the best option for these creatures, and then looking back at the ghoul having an existential crisis. The best option for all of you, for whatever safety that you want to have, is to remain here. Open up the cages. Find other ghouls that haven't been found by any of us yet. Gather yourselves, and even try to find ghouls that remain insane, and try to help them too. I do not care. Good. Get out of here. And you're dead. Get out of the chaos that is the Deadlands. You're dead. Make these mazes plentiful as they are. You're home now. And you can be safe. I... I have been able to make sense of this all because... My, my family should st st still still be out there I, it, it can't be it can't be I my, oh, I don't I can't this existence has been torture from the very moment I've been put into this body the very moment I felt that pull, that chilling agony as my whole body felt like it was ripping apart. This constant burning, searing, cold flame that consumes me. I pushed through it because my, my family's out, out there. We just had a boy. I sent my wife off with him and got captured with Master Nigel and came here and then I woke in this body but I, I just I just want to know that they're safe at the very least I or to protect them with what little I might have just want to see the surface. I need to see Probably don't. I need to see my home. I don't know if there's much of it left. But all right. Where did you send your family? I, they went to hiding in our cellar. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I don't. How long has it been? Like two hundred years or something. water. Surely there there has to be some sources that would help them survive, or maybe they yeah. left. See, there's this, like, fog everywhere that makes you insane and then turns you into what you are. No, 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 no. Stop. Stop. Yeah, I thought you meant you sent them to a different That's, uh, city. Well, I maybe they wearing these masks. They their way out. He's he's clearly in denial at this point, and seems to be mumbling a little bit to himself. There's no way, and he just starts picking up. He picks like up the rock and starts just scratching random scratches on the ground. Well. We could walk away. Also, well, yeah, you're free to go if you want. I, I, I will. It will be. I will cling on to hope. You what else do I have? Him. Right. I. This the city's still there. It's just. Full of fog, but you should be fine. Where where did you come from? Which way out are you all? Out of we're, the lab? We're like way in here. Uh, this way? <laughs> well, the, yeah, the lab exits that way. Uh, all right, then. Well, I will find Nigel. He'll, he'll know well, what to do. He'll, he'll, he'll know how to get out. Hey. Where does the Reaper... No, he, they don't. But where does the Reaper usually <laughs> come from? Uh, okay. The way in front of us. So there might be another other way. I, yes. I will. He is just mumbling and he starts heading out this way. Yeah, I was going to help that guy, but... If he left them to the cellar up there, would probably uh, didn't make it. It seemed that the best of the experiments wasn't the best after all. Now he's just going to remain like Nigel and the other one, stuck in the mantis. What's this last one doing? He's just been watching you all. Well, I'm not going to start a fight if we don't need to. Doesn't so. look, there doesn't look like there's animosity. He's just been quiet, reserved, and watching patiently. Actually, as or, you kind of look over at his eyes, he kind of has a, a studied gaze. Appears to be... Um, Observant, have some intelligence behind the eyes. Which, uh, you got a sad story, too. Oh, stories are sad if you make them out to be. That doesn't even make sense. But... Well, I'm the ghoul, aren't I? What story could I say that wouldn't be? Maybe no story at all. No, I True. Don't. Fair enough. I mean, you can leave now if you want. I could. Or I could remain here. I won't die, nonetheless, unless killed. You can jump off the cliff. I have to come back. 
Um, I didn't know it worked like that. Part of the horrid experiments. I've been killed many times now. Squashed. Ripped apart. Cut. Slashed. Why? What were they trying to figure out? Not exactly sure. Do you want us to kill you for good? Hmm. An enticing offer. Not yet. Tell me what you find. Maybe you can explain some more about myself to me. Read what notes he was making. Oh, yeah, we read I some. You can do that. Well, there's probably better that it's in this lab, I would hope. No, the journal. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I see. More related to the experiments. Yeah, maybe. But first, um, I want to check if those big guys dropped anything else. So the one that the um, armor that fell at the top, right? You can take the ring the shoulder gauntlets, the sword, um, you can put them all, you can start identifying them all with your yeah. plate of identifying. Who has that again? It can just be like a group thing. Someone yeah, has right. it. The group I'll decides to that. take it out. It will take probably an hour total to get through all the different items um, between amongst them, but you can start identifying each of them. Do you want an order? Right. I would probably do the sword first. Soft. You're soft. I saw what you did with that ghoul. Leaving him to live. Oh, that's why you won't let me out. You are scared of me. Scared chickens are afraid to fight. I'll fight you if you can get out of there. <laughs> you can kill this one. <laughs> like, if you can't even get out of the cage, you're not know, even worth my time. As I said, it's some form of entrapment magic. So break out. He literally got out, and you didn't. I could get out. That's because everyone fears me. Why because should he's we? scared of you, he's able to get out. Exactly. I Freedom is for the your weak. Brain with muscle. Boy, I will. And he's just violently thrashing about. Doesn't do anything. Um, Eldris, you approach upon the next room. Um, inside, you see there are lanterns. Uh, oh, you can turn on the lights, by the way, if anyone wants to do. Just let me know if you want to do prestidigitation or whatnot. Turn um, on lights. Can uh, we Terencia, take please. his swords on? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll prestidigitate. There, the are, there are chandeliers okay. hanging from the ceiling, and inside... They illuminate this dim lit um, room, but on the far side of the wall, there are glyph engravings and many curious devices. Might be mistaken for twisted abstract sculptures crafted from metallic substance. They're mounted on stands and tubular structures connect them to the wall. These green things. Each device has a small switch on them. Colors, they seem to be filled. 
blue, red, purple, red, yellow, green, blue. And there are different numbers, the amount filled on each. On the table, you see liquids of each, that they can be different amounts can be put in to determine for what purpose, you're not sure. Do you want to hit, hit a flip, flip a switch or whatnot? I am not sure about touching any of this stuff. Can I access the liquid? It's on that table right there, yep, above you. Can I um roll alchemy to identify it? Of course. Yep. Go ahead, just roll. Chirp is putting their ear against this door for any movement or noises. Okay, roll perception. I'm super perceptive. You faintly hear something on the other side of the door, Chirp. You're certain that an enemy is probably there. Can we take a quick um, rest? Or can I bother clearing? Well, I can't move Kazarus for some reason. Oh, I was in the wrong seat. Okay, never mind. Um, and Tansac. Taking out some of the liquid and analyzing it, they appear to be different colors, which seem to match the um, devices, the colors that they have inside. You see that each of them has uh, measuring increments on the side, measured in what we could call out of game milliliters. Um, but in game, it's abbreviated MG. Um, you see that they each have five milliliters of substance and it seems to be extremely precise how they might need to be utilized, each in some tubular apparatus which has a stopper so that it can be put to a specific amount necessary. They're clearly connected to the other bits of liquid. You see looking at the tank on the other side, similar to the equipment which might you have yourself or have utilized before, you would know how to attach each to drip a certain amount of the substance into its corresponding color um, if you so wished. The use of it, it is magical in some regard, but just judging from a cursory glance, you would need to do experimentation to understand what its purpose is. Are there any vials of it? Are there, like I said, there's five different ones. Each has five uh, milliliters of each of the colors, blue, purple, red, green, yellow, and blue again. So uh, 10 milliliters of blue, five milliliters of the rest. Would I be able to count this as a short rest if I'm just if an hour this passes? This whole time we've been talking, and then I'm just kind of yeah, it hasn't been quite an hour yet. Here. All right, can uh the bane of warlock? I get it. Can I take notes on how it's set up and take the vials? Of course. Yep. You can uh, make just make a note. Um, doesn't have even have to be in your inventory. You could put it in your journal if you want. Um, Eldros, actually, you see that within these glyphs, um, there's some faint elvish writing. I go ahead and approach them to read. Here's what it says. In this quiet chamber, the light of dawn mingles with the setting day. A tale woven of simple elements, of sap, of leaf, separate yet connected, their quiet power never fades. As nightfall draws near, 
violets begin to bloom in the creeping gloom. One life, one drop of blood could end in just a single swift action. Go ahead and say it out loud or read it out loud for everyone. Would I hear this since I'm focusing on this over here? Uh, yeah, sure. And you hear, like, skittering sound. Chirp, you suspect it might be spiders. Okay. Uh, is it, like, large skittering? Or am I, or is this, like... No, a... it's just, like, a quick skittering. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello. I have heard some skittering sounds that way. I point to the door to the south of us. Uh, so whatever I didn't check, but whatever is making a skittering sound is large enough to make a skittering sound. What do we know that skitters? You, just stares at you, just no emotion, and just says, Brace the door. Stay there. Oh, Tansak, you can you can do it. It seems that these torches or whatever are some type of puzzle to unlocking something. At least it is clear to me from what I read. I can light the torches. You think it's to open? Okay, well, if we're opening that door, then uh, there's there's two doors down here. Maybe I can get a buddy to brace the doors. Um, real quick, is this thing in front of me anything? It's a pedestal. Um, it doesn't appear to have anything on it. Oh. Great. So, you want me to do what, Eldros? I believe you said brace the door. Oh. Which one? Um, yeah, either you... of them. He said he offered maybe you could do it or Terencio. Who's going to do this puzzle? You see that there are small like ever... switches on each of them. I give a little whisper in the earrings, like, uh, if I'm, I will stand watch while you do the puzzle, but I am, I, I can give suggestions. Did you want to roll perception as well? Um, I guess Tansac, because now you're there. The yeah, year um, is I have a high passive, too. Well, just, but you're actively trying to hear it, so. Um, wow. You hear that same sound, that but it's not skittering. It's the sound of lightning. Oh. I hear lightning. Oh. But there's no bugs. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess no bugs, but also lightning? I'd rather but, deal with the lightning. Isn't, I thought it was thunder. It's I think something would be even milder. Sounds like Kazuya's is lightning spell. Oh. Magical terms, <laughs> magical sources producing potential arcane magics at the other side. Whatever's in there is volatile. Oh, my bad then. I, I thought the crackle was the skitter. <laughs> the sticks happen. However, I will say I solved both of the previous puzzles involving such ambiguity, so I want to see how you all went. I got a small puzzle. Uh, um, Kazri says, I would normally solve puzzles like this, but uh, my tail got literally ripped off and eaten, so I'm not in the best mood right now. Is that where you kept your brain? <laughs> I hide my tail. 
Be wait, you have again? out of oh hold up. I mean, I'm out assuming of... <laughs> I'm assuming I have like an appendage. The, 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 oh, I mean, okay. I don't I don't think I have like a tail, but like the feathery part. Yeah. Mm, okay. I mean the the ends of your feathers have a tail. <laughs> right. Uh, let me check. Do I have cochlear implants? No. <laughs> no, right? Okay. They should. Birds don't have tails. Okay, the only tail. They have on the... tail feathers, then. No yeah, way. but that is like different. I think probably. Anyways, no tail. For comedy, yes, but. As as I said. It's quite a shame that the light of dawn mingles with the setting day until the woven of simple elements of sap of leaf separate yet connected their quiet power never fades. As nightfall draws near, violets begin to bloom in the creeping gloom. One life, one drop of blood could end in just a single swift action. You see that each mm. of the containers, they have switches on them. They have tools to measure the amount of liquid inside of them. They have a part where the liquid could be put inside. Um, and the colors are, at the top part, we have blue, purple, red. At the bottom part, we have yellow, green, and blue. And blues. OK, so it's a color puzzle. And the first thing talks about sap. Do you think that's a yellow sap? Would you be able to write? The colors over the things. Uh, sure. That could make it easier. But I'm supposed to pour the liquid in there. So there's like a lever, right? That's gonna throw the liquid in there if we throw the lever. But where does he keep getting the liquid from? If this is how you open the door, <laughs> it's magic, man. Mm. So, sap of leaf. Uh, there's no other color word until where it says nightfall. Nightfall is dark. There's no dark, though. Purple's kind of dark. Is it a uh, dark purple? Well, purple's probably like a violet, where it says violets begin to bloom. So if there's no black, then we can we can skip nightfall and go straight to violet, which is purple. But I don't... Do you think sap of leaf means yellow or green? Or and both? Isn't sap orange? We don't have an orange. That's even worse. What we have red, yellow, and red. <laughs> yeah, that will make orange. But then, like, we press yellow and red. I guess we could do yellow and red to make orange, and then green for the leaf. Uh, then violet, then red. Well, we know red is blood. <clears throat> right? When it brings this blood, isn't that when it, when we throw the lever for red? Yeah, well, not always. Wait, yeah, what kind of blood do you have? Um, I actually don't know. Did T-Clink just have red? All humanoids that aren't undead would generally okay. have, yeah, red blood. You have blood cells, so. Okay, makes sense. Also, violet would be blue and red, not purple. Okay. Well, I mean, that would just make purple, I guess. <laughs> I don't think... I mean, do you okay? I look at Eldros. Do you think if I mess up, I get a second chance, or because I'm either just gonna start trying things? You're in the chamber of a madman who experimented with bodies and turned them into ghoulish creatures. I believe that this could be a trap altogether. If you don't and get why are there two blues? Okay, fair. No, there are. Oh wait, there are two blues. Uh, sh it should be. Oh, there are two blues actually. They did write that right. Huh. Um. Oh, sorry. We could do. Well, for for just pointing out colors, right? We could do like yellow, green, purple, red. 
gen values of blue, unless blue is used to darken things for nightfall. I'm confused. What are we actually doing with them? Do you want to take a closer look at each of the apparatuses? Yeah, that's that's a good uh, that's a good question, uh, oh, uh, Terencio. You can read on yeah. each of the apparatuses that they have a mill a leader. You know, it says MG, but you can Tansack could have described basically what that means. Um, right. That they have different mill leaders filled of their different liquids. They don't all appear to be the same level. Um, blue at the top is 21 the purple is 33 the red is um 61 then you go to the yellow is uh 22 the green is 24 the blue is 40. Mm -hmm. Tansak, the more time you spent there carefully listening, you see that that crackling sound of electricity is consistent and no other sounds. Yeah, I don't hear anything else. <laughs> um, well, if we don't use any blues, That's 140. Uh, but then I also don't know how to use the blues. But there's only five of each. What? You have 10 milliliters of blue, five milliliters green, five milliliters yellow, five milliliters red, five milliliters purple. Right. I mean, the numbers next to them. The 21, 33, 61. Oh, yeah. I, thought, Those... I was answering Tansac, though. Oh, my bad. No, no not, not how much liquid Tansac. I mean, like, the numbers. Wait. Yeah, there's numbers. How much the big things are full? Yep. Or, okay. Do you want to try Cause... pushing a switch and see what happens? <laughs> <laughs> Because here, here, hold on. Before you, before you do anything, that's right. It says of sap, of leaf. So maybe if they have if they have numbers, maybe you add them, right? So what is uh, what is green and yellow together? Um, nothing. <laughs> no, in numbers. With the... Oh. <laughs> Sorry. 22 and 24, right? That's... Uh, 45. Uh, wait. 45. 45. No, it's got to be even because they're both even, right? 22. That's, that's what, um, that's just, uh, 46. 46. <clears throat> I give Eldris a thumbs up. <laughs> um, so maybe the first sentence is, is 46 or, Maybe what, hit green, what? Oh, wait. or maybe maybe hit yellow first. I have to change. I accidentally put a wrong number on one of them. It doesn't oh. change it. Sorry. No I'm worries. Messing with you, but I just realized I put the wrong number. It was actually fifty-one for the top 51? one. Fifty-one. Yeah, for the red. Sorry. Uh okay. Wait, so I don't want to flip the wrong switch and get. Okay, here I'll I'll flip. I, I think since it says of sap, we hit yellow first, or I I'll hit yellow first. Everybody run out of the room. You know the you know the drill. If if somebody gets shot, it's gonna be me. <clears throat> right. 
Good luck, chef. <laughs> okay. I don't need luck when I've thought out the answer. See, I, I know how you smart people are now. Wow, it feels good to be right. Okay. So, Chirp, you walk over and hit walk the switch. Walk over to the yellow. I throw the lever. All right. As you pop that lever down, you hear a sound of liquid seeming to fall. You see that some of that yellow plops down a little bit and illuminates. Nothing else happens. Guys? It's safe. Top. Question mark. It is lit up now. Maybe it is telling me to do it again, or to do more. Maybe it is potentially it is continuing the sequence. What do you think goes next? Green of sap of leaf, so yellow green. Thanks. All right, run that other in Terencio, unless you want to be a, a bright light too. I throw the green lever. Okay, you move over, plop the green lever. Suddenly, the yellow and green start to, their vials start to deplete until you see on green has two milliliters and blue has uh, 60, uh, wait, 20, 61 milliliters mm -hmm. left on blue. Which blue? Wait, what? Wait. Wait, hold up. Didn't they have 21 and Sorry, 20? six. wait. It's 20, 62. Now there's 62 milliliters of blue and two milliliters left of green. Wait. Didn't, it seems didn't that as you um, pull the switch, the yellow and green went down into some container and it started filling up the blue vial to, on your south part. The south blue. Oh, okay, I see. So now the south blue is now at 60 milliliters, and the green is now at 2. Well, you, now you've lost all our green. And yellow is completely is, depleted. Right. Is there any other lighting up, or just the lights are gone? The green is lit because you have the green pushed, but the yellow light's gone. Um, okay, maybe this isn't bad yet, question mark? It says separate yet connected. I mean, they separated. They're still connected somehow, so maybe... Maybe I, I need to unflip the lever now? Or do I flip a new one? Terencio? Um, do you think uh, when it says as nightfall draws near, we have to come here at night? I don't think <clears> so. <throat> How would we even know? <laughs> How would the room even know? <laughs> no. Don't yeah. you have a magic that like makes time or like a don't you have a don't you know what time it is above ground if you use magic? I don't know. I don't know that. I can make it dark though. Um, if you want, you can always roll investigation at any time, and I can give you a hint. <laughs> um, I, okay, can I roll Arcana to see if magicians can know the time using magic? Um, yeah, go ahead, roll it. Thank okay, you. Terencio, I'll, one second. <laughs> so, um, looking at these, uh, this riddle, understanding it. Clearly, it's referencing the colors. Right? Yeah. Um, maybe a combination of colors needs to occur and so that only one color is left over. But what color should be left over? I don't know. Maybe multiple need to be left. Mm. Doritos by a lot. Really? Wow. Yeah. They he has say... 180, and Doritos have a lot more. <laughs> wow. 
I wonder if it's because Doritos are just worse for you, I guess. Maybe I don't know. Doritos, They're both really the bad. ones you can get in uh, New Bilton. <laughs> no. All right, what are you doing? Um, so, maybe, uh, maybe I was wrong, question mark, since the, the first one says the light of dawn, right? Uh, because I thought, I thought that was, uh, I, I thought, I thought it started at, at of sap, so my bad, but, oh, also, but, but instead, uh, Based on your Arcana roll, um, as you have been turning these, you do see that the glyphs faintly glow before deluminating. Deluminating, okay. Yeah, they illuminate briefly and then deluminate whenever you're combining them. So you seem to be on the track of two oh, levers need to be pressed for some reason. The levers didn't unpress though, right? They're just still down? Yeah, currently they're still okay. down, but you've depleted yellow. Uh, <clears throat> maybe it would have started with yellow anyways, guys, because it said the light of the dawn mingles with the setting day, but then maybe the setting day was blue, and we had to press blue after yellow, and maybe I screwed up. But let's assume I didn't screw up, and it starts with yellow-green. Um, <laughs> they mentioned nightfall again, so that makes me think it was blue twice. So, uh, let's go purple instead, because we're going to skip nightfall and go violet. All right, you just press the lever? Uh, well, I'm going to wait until everyone gets out of here. Uh, or do you want to press it, Francia? Are you volunteering? No. Okay. <laughs> we have full confidence in you. I flip the purple. All right. The purple light, it illuminates this purple, doesn't seem to be pouring down. It seems that the ones on the north side aren't connected to the ones on the south side. Oh, okay. Um, maybe. We did solve the bottom one already, and it's just blue at the end. And then purple could be, since it says bloom in the creeping gloom, maybe it is purple, blue, red. But also, maybe it could just be purple, red, blue. Well, the problem is, mm -hmm. purple doesn't mix with anything to make another color. I don't do think mean? yellow and green make blue. They Huh? True. Oh, did. <clears throat> yeah, we I mean, I mean, I'm just saying that they, it doesn't look like they're they're all mixing together. I put I tapped purple and purple didn't mix with the other things. Maybe maybe blue and purple make red. You want to try pulling one tan sack? Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. you, which one did you want to pull? The blue one. Okay, because I mean, either way, I'm fine. I it could be blue since it says violets bloom and creeping gloom, but then I'm also thinking it says blood, so I want to pull red. But I will step out of the room this time. Good luck. I'll pull the blue one. Okay, as you pull blue, it lights up, and then both the vials of the blue and purple seem to push down until. The red one gets filled up a bit. It doesn't illuminate, hey, though. Right. It just seems that the level raises. Now you have um, 72 milliliters of red and uh, 12 milliliters left of purple. Did we, did we push everything? The red and blue are not nope. pushed. We have we've never pulled the other blue. Did you pull the, the, the lever, though? How about I pull this other blue? Okay. Sure, go for it. I'll As pull you that pull blue. that blue, it starts falling down. It starts 
yellow gets filled back up, the yellow pours out, it seems to then equal that all of them start pouring each other out, not filling back up any of the others until it's completely depleted. Then they start, then all of the switches flip back up and they start filling up again at different milliliters. All of them or just the three? All those bottom three. Oh, those bottom three. Okay. Oh, then we probably got the purple blue right. So why don't you press red for that one? Or one wait. Second. Wait. Maybe maybe it told us yellow, green, blue was wrong. Okay, now so that's let's... the now that's the new milliliters for that. Did you want to oh, press yeah. that red one? Uh well, those are all lit up, right? No, you didn't pull the red. I know, but all these lights are lit up, right? No, just the purple's lit. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. let's see what red does. As you pull red, once again, it mixes back in with that purple, that blue lights back up briefly, and they all slowly pour out until nothing is left. Then they refill back up at new milliliters. Now we're back to the original? Nope, now it's different values, but... You're back to all what of the them. What the hell are we trying to do? Uh, switches uh, flip back. The, co the little cogwheels in, in Jerv's brain are trying to work, and he's uh, he's going to tell Tenzin, like, I think we got it wrong, but we could try again. You could always uh, look for more notes or whatnot. What happened to good old-fashioned keys? I'm going to look for a keyhole. Is there a keyhole? No keyhole. <laughs> well, there's no keyhole, Terencio. Yeah, okay. but imagine this is your lab. Oh, I want to go into the the office. I got to solve the color riddle. Yeah, doesn't that of make it course. secure? Maybe he has a different way to get past it. Who knows? You could go exploring. But yeah, do the, do the, do the ghost thing. Walk in. Let us in. I could. I have one charge. You know what? On second thought, if you can't get back, that'd be pretty bad if you couldn't get back. Do you want to try it? Can I listen at this door? Okay, sure. Perception. Sure. I'm going to do it. Listening very carefully. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. No sound. I'm gonna, I have a theory. I throw the yellow lever. Okay. Yellow lever goes up. I throw the blue lever. All right, blue goes up. It starts filling up the green until um, the blue is the only one lit. I toss the green lever? The green lights back up. So does the yellow, but they all pour out until they're replaced by new values and the levers switch back up. Ah, oh, okay. Did they all light up the last time as yep. well? They before all they lit reset? up the okay. last time before they all reset. Okay. Um, I thought since it said they're separate but connected, their power, their quiet power never fades, it was going to have me separate yellow and blue and green, or yellow and green and blue, but... Uh, now we've done yellow, green, blue, yellow, blue, green. So blue, green, yellow. It's got to be another starter. I will say there might be something that you're missing. Oh, no yeah. doubt. <laughs> For sure. That um, Tansac did pick Definitely. up. What? I have, I have vials. You, you can have, change uh... the values of the milliliters if you want. Oh, ten sec. Didn't you have like a dropper thing? Maybe. 
<laughs> but what are they all supposed to be equal? Uh, well, I think the first one's easy. I think it's a separate yet connected. They're quite power and other things. Maybe they're the same. Well, if we're supposed to make them all equal each other, only have. Uh... Oh, well, I guess we can make all the bottom ones equal. No, no, no. I mean, like, um, make. Uh, I will say. Sap and leaf, like yellow and green, equal? What you can determine is that the bounce that they are vary so much that that can't possibly be the solution. It seems to be random, blue, the amounts yeah. that they're filled. Because in one iteration, the yellow was 34, the green was 20. There is no point you could have made them equal. We can now. Yeah. I'm just saying, you can always do it. It's up to you. Your call. This is hard. If anyone um, wants, Terencio's used his investigation. If anyone wants to get a hint, you can always do it. I will say if you get 20 or above, I will basically just give you the answer if you want it. <laughs> it's in this Kazaris' department. Would you, would you want uh, uh, I'll trust. I require your assistance. I would like Kazaris to roll. Ben like, Eldros in character said, like, you know, let you handle it, but I've been, like, trying to decipher, like, <laughs> trying to look at it, and I'm, I'm stuck here. <laughs> no. no, I have to be honest. Like, Eldros is looking intently, but it's like, what the heck? <laughs> it's definitely, it's a multi-layer puzzle. Yeah. Um... <laughs> it's a multi-layer puzzle. Now, I will say now out of game, because everybody seems to be stuck, so that we can help keep moving. You're getting stuck on the riddle a little bit too much. The riddle should be fairly simple. Like, fairly simple is the riddle. The puzzle part after the riddle, figuring out what to do now, that's the harder part. So, but, but the I riddle don't even is fairly simple. The riddle. Well, um, someone roll investigation. That's guidance like, as well rolls. Yeah, you can guidance yourself. You get basically guidance for a minute, but you can just keep guidancing yourself. So, yo, yeah. you can guidance them to do math. Yes. Yeah, you can just keep guidancing yourself. Um, it's not like there's any enemy or whatever. I mean, who is more intelligent here? Who I has think Casarius and Terencio have the highest investigation roles. Um, so Casarius has a plus seven, but Terencio I already used his. As you're checking for intelligence, you see me, and uh, my eyes are looking in opposite directions. As uh, my like, there's fumes coming out from my ear holes, as a, oh. like a shattered, or not a shattered, but a flickering light bulb is trying to work over my head. Okay, that's hysterical. Okay, chirp, roll it. Just investigation. Oh, I'm sorry, intelligence check. Oh boy. <laughs> uh. Myself. <laughs> Wait. That is. Wait. Let's see. What's your intelligence score? <laughs> Minus one. It's uh no, but is it an eight? That is one success out of twenty five for potentially gaining an intelligence point. You now have the yes. ability score increased <laughs> of sharpening your mind. New downtime yeah. thing you can do. Yes. Smart shirt. Okay. Wow, why'd you how'd you roll so low? That's crazy. Investigation. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. Um, okay. Like, well, I'm intelligent, but I don't have proficiency. What I can tell you then, to save time for everybody, um, in between your coordinating with Terencio, um, you and Terencio kind of come together and realize clearly the riddle is linked to colors. So each line should have the main color that we need to determine. All right, so each line should have a main color, one color that you need to pick out of that main line. Um, and it can't be the same color. So once you determine the colors out of each separate line, maybe that will help you solve the next part. Oh, 
on the last one is definitely red. Right. Did I disconnect again? I think Eldros is just muted himself while he's trying to figure it out. Oh. Um, no, you're there. Yeah. Uh, and meanwhile, I'll add that to your stat thing, Chirp. Okay, sounds good. Okay. I think the last line is definitely red. The third one's probably purple. I agree with that. Blood kind of is a great ind indicator of that. Over a fun fact, depending on the component of metal that is within your blood, your blood can change colors. If it's copper, it's usually another color. That's random fact, just because I'm stressing the case. Um, third to me is quite readily purple. Dawn. It's so strange. Yeah, um... In this quiet chamber, the light of dawn mingles with the setting day. Hold on. Yellow and red. It, hold on. It's it's interesting. Tadzak, actually, you you said something that was in my mind too. Um. The light of dawn mingles, right? It's not like dawn is arriving or like. Wait, hold on. The light of dawn is not dusk. Dang it. Never mind. Mm. Anyone? Also, do you want Kazaris to roll for it? Because she can. She's just not yes. here. Okay. Who would we tell the hint to then? Uh, who wants it? Who wants to role play as Kazaris briefly? Tan suck. <laughs> you do it, Tan. Okay. Okay. Where's your thing? Okay, whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. She. Do you want her to get the answer? Yes. Okay. I'll say. You're all really stupid. How have you not figured this out already? Okay, and then let me tell it to you one second. Okay. So, yes, it was. This is a hard one, for sure. The riddle itself is basically a trick question. All of the answers to the riddle are the color that you don't want. So you're getting the answer um, dawn. So that could be yellow, could be red. Let's put it as either of those. You're getting leaf, could be yet sap. Yellow could be green. So you're getting both those. But now you know, OK, so those are the ones that it could be. You're getting nightfall, violet, blooming, gloom, but Purple, maybe blue, but less likely blue, but purple for sure. Blood, definitely, probably red. So what's the color that there's two of also that it doesn't? So it's probably blue. Now, the next part, this is the harder part. How do you get it so that blue is the answer? You at have, the end? yeah, you need blue to be the answer at the end, right? Based off of what Which you one? discovered. Um. So that's the thing. Probably maybe both top. maybe both blues because they're separate. So you have um you picked up things that can change milliliter. Whenever two of them are flipped down, they combine to form the other one. So basically what you need is them to combine all the way until there's one left of the color that you want. Oh, all right. so they all need to be empty except blue? Exactly. Jesus Christ. Supposed to never phase it out at all. So. Okay. So Kazri says, "You guys are all stupid." Yeah. So um. Yes, I am. How do I say this? So there's. That's an easy. So dawn and setting sun that could be yellow or red 
then what was it? Sap with a leaf. That could be yellow or green. Then violet. That could be purple or blue. And then red, because of blood, can be red. And then we're left with blue. So basically, all the other colors need to be empty but blue. How did you figure that out? Because you're retarded. So we just pulled everything but blue. Well, doing red. Well, if we do, um, you discovered that when you did that, purple. it would always stay lit up. One of them would always stay lit up, and blue wouldn't light. If we. It's like subtracting colors. So when we did green and yellow, green minus yellow is blue. And then so when we did purple and blue, purple minus blue is red. So if we do uh, purple and red, that'll make the top blue go up. If we do green then yellow, that'll make the bottom blue go up. But then um, whenever you open back, but it wouldn't dump all of one color. Then whenever you open it back up, the blue, it would combine until it all equaled out and it would be all empty. Stomp and extend and... Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. That riddle was definitely just a trick question. It was designed so that all the answers you got weren't the answer that you wanted. Still hard. Like right now. Damn the trick. Oh yeah, this is the but second part. Okay. This is the second part of the riddle. Press purple and red. Yeah. Okay. So she got I'll a twenty-five. So I will say, I mean, she did figure out that you need to use the milliliters of that liquid that you got to change. Maybe some oh, values yeah. Hold on. Uh, or whatnot, so that it's always blue that's left. So just everything, the purple and red have to be empty, right? Yep, everything but blue to be the last thing left. So what if we just smash the purple and the red containers? I think but if we make the you could certainly try. I think if we make the um non blue colors equal, then that'll equal out to blue, right? Wait. Cause a little bit was left over. That could be true. What you currently have is nineteen seventeen twenty three for the top section. And 22, 24, and 18 for the bottom section. Oh, there's no way I, I have enough purple to... Uh... Yeah, you don't have to make them. I'll give you the hint again. They don't have to be equal. Just one of the type that you want has to be left. There is a special, like there is a certain rule that will always work with this. It's just a standard puzzle. When you one combine two... I want, I want blue. Yep, when you combine two, it will make the other one and fill that one back up. But you always lose some because when you're combining, it's divided by two. So what you want, the only thing to be left is one of the other. What? So what you found is whenever you dumped them all and they all had the same values, all of them eventually disappeared. But you need one to remain. In the non-blue ones? When, when you open yellow, green, and blue, yeah, they all seem to share between colors until eventually everything was drained. Nothing was left. Yeah. And then they filled back up. Then they filled back up after the switch got turned off on its own from the mechanism. And they filled back up at random values.
I'm still kind of lost. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> what's going on at all. It's a, it's just a standard mathematic puzzle. Um, okay, so she got the 25. I'll just tell you straight up the answer if you want. Unless someone's still figuring it out. I don't want to ruin it for you. Dude. You can go ahead. <laughs> okay, so... Realistically, the moment uh, math got into the question, I don't think Trick could solve it at his intellect right now. So what you have here, like, let's look at the top value, 19, 17, and 23. They're all odd numbers. So if you change one of them to an even number, then that one's always going to be left. Bottom one, 22, 24, 18, they're all even numbers. So if you change one of those to an odd number, that's the one that's going to be left. So say no, you want blue. No matter what we do? No matter what you do, yep. You just change it off oh. by one and make sure that's not even with the others, and that's the one that's always going to be left. Oh. Yep, super simple. I would not have gotten that at all. Wait, wait. So so we had to make the top top blue 20 and the bottom blue 19. Yeah, that could work. Oh. Uh, okay. Okay, Kazi's so... going to reiterate again that everyone's retarded? Now, why... I will say, you figured this out, right? But are you sure you want to do this right now? You don't even know what this does. No, I don't. <laughs> I, I think we're, we're still going to... Why gonna are you telling us this now? Stuff? You spent like an hour figuring this out. I, but bro, we're, I we're still going to open it. You. you were just All curious. the doors are locked. I'm, I'm not going to let you scare me. I'm going to fucking do it. I'm just saying. Wait, has it been an hour in game? Uh, yes, you can all... Let's give you all a long rest. Give me Thank a second. God. A long oh, rest? No, sorry, short rest. Um, Bobby. No, 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 no. Wait, there you go. The... It should have prompted you all. You did not. Okay, well, you'll just have to... Oh, no, it just I'm gave just... it back to you automatically, Terencio. Well, How many can I choose lot. from? As many dice as I want? Uh, Every... Yeah, because you got multiple long rests, so everybody's hit dice are back to full, yeah. So as many as you want. Well, are they half or full? They're they should be full, I think, because you got like three oh. long rests in a row. Yeah, you got like yeah, three long right. rests in a row and didn't use any short rest hit points. So, because you get half of them back every long rest, I think. Yeah, yeah. I just remembered that we did do that. Oh yeah, and Kazarius will, of course, take her short rest. She, I think she's going to use all of hers. Unless you had healing to give her Eldros, she's going to use like all of her hit die. Uh, hold up. Yeah, I don't, I don't got like the big heals. Okay. Or at least I want to conserve spell slots. So he gave me back a slot for one of the, um, I forget what they're called, for the warlock. The Hexblade thing? Isn't that no, no, those the mystic, short rest? The Mystic Arcanum spells. Oh, you're not supposed to get them back on short rest? It says, I think it's like, hold on. It's on a long rest. Yeah, it's weird. He gave me back one of them, but well, just remove not, the, them, not the other. Just uh, get rid of it then, if it, if you're not supposed to get it back. I, I can't it's a bug. edit. I can't edit that number. Just well, then just don't use it. Not a yeah. big deal. All right. Yeah, it's just got to be a bug. Okay, she's almost back to full, but has no short rest die to use. Well, okay. okay I'll so fill last chance. Things up. Are you sure? If y'all want to leave the room, you can leave the room. Like, sure about opening up the or solving the puzzle? Yeah, you do you want to solve the puzzle now, or do you want to look at anything else here? Well, solve it. At least I say solve it. Oh, and wait. 
did we did our identifying plate finish? Um, yes, it did. So, uh, let's see that blade that you got. Let's see. The blade is the one that you probably want to know right now. My items. Where the hell is that? Okay, sorry, I'm just struggling to find my own thing. There we go. There it is. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay, you find the Harken Blade. This is a great sword which gives you 2d4 necrotic damage on a hit. Um, very powerful. Has no bonuses, isn't like a plus anything, but 2d4 necrotic damage. Um, on a strike, you have the ring of spell save. That one, oh, it, it requires attunement. Ring of spell save, it gives you, doesn't require attunement. Once a day, you can choose to have advantage on a saving throw of any spell that requires a save. Any spell that requires a save, you can have an advantage once a day, and you can choose to use it after it would affect you. So you can choose if you fail to roll again. Um, he he just said it does and also does not require attunement. Which it, one yeah, is it? It doesn't require attunement is the ring. The blade requires attunement. Oh, sweet. Um, I want the ring. There is. Do you armor. really need the ring? He. Oh yeah, maybe you do. Um. Yeah, because the... you spent the whole fight. Uh. I'm just the most dangerous when stuff affects me. Yeah, take it. Um. The armor, it uh, <laughs> is magically enchanted, has a plus one to AC, is plate armor. Requires attunement. If attuned, it will shrink to fit the size of the wearer. And any creature that attacks you with a melee attack takes five necrotic damage on hit. Oh, this shit. Um, maximum value for it is ten a creature. So a creature can't do more than ten necrotic damage themselves every minute. So for one combat, you can only do ten damage max to them. If they hit you twice with a melee weapon, they would take that damage. Um, but it requires attunement. The shoulder pauldrons also require attunement. They can be worn with any medium or heavy armor as an attachment. Um, they will shrink to fit the size of the wearer after attuning. Once a day, you gain Terencio's um, ghost step, basically. Um, once a day. Then I think that was all of them. Was, is there anything I'm missing? I'll just look. Yeah, and then there's just normal plate armor. That one's not enchanted. The uh, enchanted oh, plate and the armor ring. is heavy, right? Yeah, the ring, I forgot. Yeah, the, the armor is there's, heavy armor. There's two rings? Um, there is a second ring. The other ring requires attunement. It is Ring of Life Draining. Once a day, when a creature within five feet of you hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction to activate the ring, draining life from that creature. The creature then has to make a constitution saving throw or take 3d10 necrotic damage, and you heal for oh the same amount of necrotic damage dealt. If they save, they take no damage and you heal nothing. A melee or any attack? Any attack, but they have to be within five feet. Oh, so it's almost requires always going to require attunement. Okay. It's almost like, always going to be melee, but basically if it would be a hit, it would, would reduce you to zero. You could use it as your reaction still. 
um, I which to potentially heal you bad. back after you take the damage. Right. Do, yeah, do I think she healed? did want that one. Yeah. Do you yeah. get healed after you get hurt or yes. before? Yep, after okay. you get hurt. So if it would okay. reduce you to zero, it could bring you back. Yep. Interesting. Oh, I'll take the first ring for sure. Okay, yeah, that doesn't even require attunement. So just once a day. It was already used today by the creature. So next on, it will be um, working again. I guess I'll just take this over. Okay. Since we took a short rest, I'm going to roll my hit die. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> and I will remind of the Pariah bonus as well. Right, right. So you just get to just remove some hit die and take max value. So now did oh, anyone... I would still have to roll to, and then just get double of that. Oh, it's double. I thought it was max value. Okay. Got it. I think Can I, I just uh, put the sword in my journal. Yeah. Yeah, just put it in your journal because inventory is gonna break. Oh um, yeah. What is it called? Like a parkin? Parkin blade. <laughs> it's a normal great sword, two d six plus two d four necrotic, on hit. So very powerful. I can't take the armor because I can't wear heavy armor. So the uh, yeah the the shoulder pauldrons aren't heavy armor; they can be worn with medium or heavy. The armor is heavy armor. Um, that's the one that does up to ten necrotic damage to creatures that hit it with melee within a, but it, ten is the max for a minute. But it can be done to multiple creatures. So if 10 creatures hit you two times, each of them still takes 10 necrotic damage. Is that anybody? The only one I think that might be able to use it is Tansak, but yeah. currently he's wearing a mithril plate that he just enchanted, so that's Tansak's call if he wants to use it or not. You could always sell it. Yeah, probably not. Somebody else should take the pauldrons too, because I can already do the ghost step. Those can only be worn with medium or heavy, so Tansac, you could potentially do an adjustment to your armor, um, but it would be kind of, you would need to, it would be like kind of against your oath, sort of. They were, you're, you got that plate armor. You're wearing the plate armor of Rathok, so it's your call. Maybe it's okay. You would have to attune to it, and then it would adjust itself to fit to your armor. I'm not sure. But it would require attunement. But yeah, you could totally um, add it to your thing. I think we'll just keep it for now. So these items are heavy. Just keep that in mind. Um, Kazaris has a bag of holding, so I'm sure that'll, that'll work out. Yeah. So let's just say that she's got it in her bag of holding. Should we? Can you put it in her notes or? Uh, just put it in your notes, I guess. Not a big All deal. Right. It's very recent, so I'll remember it anyways. Is there a name for the armor, or just? Um. Yes, armor of. Let's see. Uh, the armor of Grave Ma. Or Grave Ma's armor. Grave Ma. Okay. And then the pauldrons? Um, pauldrons of Malachor. All right. Got it written down. All right. So are you absolutely certain you want to do this right now? 
the hell is that but what else are we gonna do and i would say that in character or in game we had just discovered flipping switches and like uh Kazarius had just like called us dumb so we're probably gonna open it okay will do so tansack what do you do I'm going to put, under Kazris' guidance, one drop in the top blue and uh, another drop in the bottom blue. Okay. That is done. So Tansak deliberately takes this apparatus, fits it in, and seems to kind of know what he's doing. Like you had worked with these tools before, you'd seen some of the same type of equipment, uh, stopper, and other methods at the Alchemist Workshop that you had been at previously and gotten to um, speak with Elevand about concepts like this where he'd briefly given you a master course. Perfectly drop in another milliliter into each. Everything seems to be ready. I'll do the switches that fill the blue. What was it, green and yellow? Okay. Green and yellow light up until they pour out some yellow remains, fills up blue. I thought yellow wasn't supposed to remain, but whatever. There's um, a... Oh, sorry. Green remains. I was reading it backwards. I thought it wasn't supposed to. You Do you switch blue also? No. No, that resets it. No. Well, you'll see. So that's what it is right now. What do you do up here? Uh, da, 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 da. Pur yeah, yeah, purple and red. Purple and red light up and they start pouring out until just some red remains and blue is filled up higher. Wait, what? Well, do you want to flip said the blue this was, switch? You said this was the answer, so I'm going to hit the blue switch. The blue switch is pulled. It starts pouring out. The purple was still pulled, starts filling up purple. All of them start draining until only a little bit of blue is left. Okay, keep now this one. Illuminated. Same thing happens again. It starts filling back up the yellow. The yellow fills up the green. It pours out until just a little bit of blue is left. Let's take a short break right here. And then okay. come back to the game. Um, if that's good with everybody. Sure. No problem with that. Sure. Welcome back. All righty. As the final bit of fluid leaves, this illumination lights up. Glyphs carved into the ancient wall stir to life, glowing an ethereal blue that casts deep um, contorted shadows around the room. The intricate patterns seem to undulate as though the wall is breathing. For a moment, they pulsate rhythmically. Synchronizing with your heartbeat. The symphony of glowing glyphs crescendos and you find yourself entranced as that door seems to crack and creak open with a reverberating hum of chaotic, magical energy that permeates the air and floods your senses. It's a dramatic, um, uh, it's a dramatic sudden transition as defies um, categorization of a line of grinding stone, keening wind, coral whales that should not exist. Suddenly you're all yanked forward by invisible hands into a spiraling black hole that appears at the door's threshold. You can't tell if you're falling or flying or being compressed into nothingness all sensations merge into this singular experience of transition. Your nostrils fill with this coppery scent 
of freshly spilled blood mingling with mustiness, an old parchment infused with arcane energies. As abruptly as it happened, the sensation ends. You're in a grand chamber adorned with disturbing opulence, tapestries woven with images of unimaginable suffering and conquest line the walls, flickering in a ghostly illumination of sconces that burn with violet flame. The airy carries a colder, sharper scent here, metallic and tinged with alchemical spices. Sterile, yet malevolent. There's no immediate signs of enemies, but something far more unsettling becomes an apparent. An assortment of heads, perfectly preserved, yet lifeless, each housed in individual bell jars on ornate pedestals. Their eyes seem to follow you, though there's no actual movement. A chilling undercurrent suggests you're being watched. Your eyes drift upwards towards the ceiling, which soars to an almost exuberant height, lost in dark vaults above. It's adorned with a massive fresco depicting a grinning figure standing over a sea of writhing souls. His scythe is poised mid-swing its blade eerily mirrored with the shape of the glyphs that brought you here. And that face, um, only Chirp, Terencio, I'm uh, sorry, Chirp, Kazri's, and Tansac can roll history. No. <laughs> no. No. He returns. I don't know this. Okay, well, hold on. Doing it for Kazrius. Where is history? Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Chirp, you, you know. Oh, no. Sorry. No, I mean, that was because of my role. Yeah, because of my role, I don't think I know. <laughs> Tansac and Kazrius. It's eerily, extremely similar to Hawkthorn. Wait, the the mage in Ralanon? The mage in Ralanon. What the fuck? It looks ex basically the same as him, but there's some features you didn't notice on his face. But it looks like it's the same person. The floor beneath you is this cold, polished marble that reflects the ominous decor in its level. Um... The colors and textures around you are that shit a study in contrast. The darkness is punctuated by bursts of eerie blues and violets, shadows writhing in a disquieting dance across the surfaces that should be smooth, but seem to ripple as if alive. You all that seem to have funny. stumbled upon the Reaper's home. What are you all doing? Was the map supposed to change? Because I don't see it. Um, no. Sadly, I didn't have this uh, for you guys. Sadly. Chirp uh, catches his breath and says, uh, oh, um, did, did everyone else just go through that? Yeah, you're oh, all here. Yeah, you're all there. Um, no, no, I, I know, but like, the in character, right? It's it's like a little oh, okay, okay, thing okay, almost like undulating. I look for a way back. Okay, roll investigation. Looking around, um, there's no signs of any glyphs here, but you do see the staircase which leads off into a different part 
of this mansion. There are multiple doors in the lower floor as well that you could travel through. Um, there's uh, lots much to explore, but no portal, which seems to lead you back. Hey, Casrius. What, Tansac? Oh, well, well, she rolls. You mean what? Uh, d isn't that the guy? Wait. From Ralanon? Oh my god. What guy? Okay. So, you weren't here, but we met this mage um, in Ralanon. He had this crazy person running his shop. Um, and then we found out that he said he was trapped in some sort of dimension and we sold oh we sold an oh we you sold, know those uh, uh you know how we're looking for a thingy in the deadlands to make us young again super powerful thingy yeah well he gave us a bracelet to help us find a lot more of those and we sold him how many? One? Yeah, we sold him two. Oh. Two one. Two two other things like that, but that that we found. That are like powerful thingies of the same nature. You sold same. magical items. I think they're special magical items, because they're like Do you remember the name of them, Kazrius? I don't remember. I don't think one of them was planar elements, and the other was trapped in a sword. I don't. Well, just what know are they the called? Though? It. Oh, we the, the mages at the Crow Academy called it omniscient magic. Others called it essences of Parsitis. Wait, so you had some of this? And you sold it, and now we have to come to this hellhole to find more? Yeah, but they're all different, so those wouldn't have helped us get younger, though. Yeah, they weren't the same type. So essentially, this form of magic, omniscient magic, manifests in different items. You just so happen to sell two of these rare magical items to this person that we are seeing right now in the portraits. Well, they could be a twin brother. Yeah, but he looks a little different. Here. But, yeah, kind of. Could be an ancestor. I, he's still alive, though. Ancestor. Not Maybe. Ancestor. <laughs> Maybe, but it looks a lot like him. It happens. Time to tree. Unless it is exactly the same person and you were swindled on selling omniscient magic to someone that is, well, a man. Yeah, that's happened before. I am quite sure. Well, we're already here. Let's figure out what we want to do or find a way out. Uh, uh, we well, haven't we checked on that guy around. in a while, right? So... I mean, oh yeah, we haven't been back there in forever. Well, I don't know. I guess if if I don't know if the guy's alive at this very second, I don't know if we can say that this is not that guy. Like it could be, but there's a chance, right? But like we've only been gone for I think in game a couple months, so I would at, cause think he's alive. What he said was, and if you're saying this because uh, your memory is better than mine, that. He was trapped in another dimension. I don't think he meant the dimension death. Well, maybe it is an ancestor. Either way, this is the person that caused all of your undead friends to become what they are. So he is potentially here. So the more time that we are here within his life, well, we'll be able he's to the one who him. helped with it. There's a dude above him. The Reaper was the one performing the experiments. Bulldog is the one that overturned the 
Okay, point is, this person, probably inside of this very mansion, should go ahead and decide what to do, either to go after him or find a way to escape. Remember, we just finished fighting some hordes of undead. We're not at full capabilities. Right now we are in territory, but we might die. Well, let's see what he's got hidden around here. Or we do that. So, what, what are the... There are multiple options. There, there's three doors down here. One directly south to you, one to the east, and one to the west. There's also a grand staircase leading up to a second level directly in front of you. I don't think we should split up. Gang, let's split up. No, um, I don't think we should go upstairs yet. No. Why do you think he keeps the corpse of the guy here? Or do you think that it's him? What guy? No, that's a painting. There are um, oh, sorry, bad. heads right. filled up on shelves adorning the outskirts of the room. You can count them. There is over a hundred. Um, as well as those many on pedestals directly in front of you, which seem to be staring at you all. But maybe not. They aren't moving. Their eyes, though, seem to appear to follow you. Might be a trick of the light. You said there's a door to the south, the west, and the... East. Correct. Okay. And the stairways to the north? Correct. Well... I want to check the south door. Okay. Anyone going with them or anything like that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not doing? splitting up. I'm not, I'm not going alone anywhere here. I'll group up with them. We're all going together. Okay. Um, you all start walking across these marble floors and see closer in detail these heads as you appear to pass them along shelves. The lower part where their neck would connect them to their body seems to be very perfectly severed, consistently always at the same dimension. That door stands in contrast to the chamber's grandeur it's unadorned, crafted of dark ironwood. Its surface has claw marks on it, as if something had tried to escape or enter. No handle or knob is on its surface. Instead, ruins are etched into the wood, glowing intermittently with a red light that seems to pulse in time. The door framed at an arch is it framed at its arch is a sculpted stone. Um, carvings are stark and unsettling. Skeletal figures in contorted poses as if they were frozen in moments of agony or terror. Above the door frame, a single word is inscribed, but it's not in a language that any of you know. There is a bravely audible, barely audible hum like the distant echoes of a chant radiating from the door's vicinity. As light gets closer to the door, it seems to disappear. There is a darkness perpetually around it. Do you want to enter? Or attempt to open it? Mm -hmm. I rule uh, reception near it. All right. Anyone else doing anything as well? Mm, I'm not going to wander off too far from the group, so I'm just kind of peeking over there. 
my shoulders. How high is the ceiling here? Um, it's visible, so sixty feet. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll feel Cusp safe. of your dark vision. Hovering ten feet over, just in case. Um, what'd you get on your perception roll? Twelve. Okay. Uh, you there's a twelve. There's no signs of enemies that you can tell. Um, but there is something feels off. Clearly, um, crap, what is it? The air feels colder near the door. Uh, you faintly hear a hum at a low frequency, an oscillation. But that's it. That's all you can get. I mean, if y'all want, I can do my dance, figure out what's around us. Mm, sure. I feel like we've been pretty loud regardless. Yeah. All right, where is it? Why not? <laughs> this one so let's see oh Powerful. just uh yeah role play that whatever you do i'm um well i'm going to tell you what i'm looking for first powerful entities like undead planes of existence because why, why the hell not um and i can choose three right um well i know we're in a building i'm not really looking for terrain so i guess prevalent Plants, minerals, animals, or peoples. Yeah, yeah, prevalent people. Does that mean a lot or important? What do you mean? Which one? Which part? Prevalent plants, minerals, animals, or peoples. Did whatever, yeah. Whatever is concentrated there. It's not going to give you, like, a single plant. Okay. All right, so that one, the, the powerful, and then plants of existence. So, um... Yeah, I, I won't know it's around us, so I'll just start doing a little, like, shuffle and boogie. You know, we're no strangers to love. You know the rules, so do I. I'm one of the that's an orcish, down. right? Um, yeah, it's an orcish. Yeah. <laughs> do you know any other songs? Well, yeah, but that's the ritual. Oh. All right, you Maybe this, it works with other ones, but... You do this dance. The ground beneath your feet seems to resonate and vibrate. Um, and chirp, you see that these birds start flying off from Tansac in different directions, whispering in his ear over the time that this dance and song takes place. Um, Whoa! Okay, you get a lot here. The... Okay, you see ethereal strands stretching outwards in all directions, some curving upwards towards um, a distant sky, uh, marking locations of undead. Um, you see brilliant stars flare up um, in areas beyond indicating celestial entities. What? But each entity is replaced by um, a shadow almost in instantaneously, indicating that they are fiends. There are roots that appear to twist, um, indicating animals and plants that are infected with dark energy. In here? Within, you get, this is like a mile, isn't it? Three miles. It's, uh, is it's, it three miles? Yeah, it's three miles. The only reason why it wasn't long distance, because you were underground before. Um, Do I know how far away they are approximately, or just that they're around? You just know that they're around. Um... Yeah, you just know that they're around. 
um, and you gain knowledge about them. They aren't in the immediate vicinity, um, but you do know that your presence here, as you're doing that dance, they seem to shift position closer. There, You get the idea that maybe you ha might have alerted your presence, if not already <laughs> known. But I've already done it! What is through this door that we were just looking at, or in that direction? He doesn't get an idea of which direction, just that they're in the vicinity. Oh. Um. <laughs> and planes of existence? Um... Yes, there are very veins of um, veins of different essences snaking through the area, pulsing, um, indicating influence from other planes. You get that there is an influence of fiendish planes as well as the obviously negative energy plane, and you get this oppressive feeling that you are still within the negative energy plane, layered over the prime material plane. There is that constant space here indicating that you are still within the Deadlands. Okay. Um, well, so there's some fiends and uh, obviously undead. And um, those fiends seem to be getting closer. And uh, mm -hmm. I sense, would you say the fiendish plane? Uh, yes. So basically, the um, is that what you said? Sorry, a plane where oh. fiends are. Yeah, so so a connection, actually, I'll just tell you this straight up. You're a muted. connection to the plane. Oh, thank you. I will just tell you this: a connection to the plane um, where the nine hells resides. Oh, so not great. necessarily the infernal plane. Well, I'll say that. So that that's lovely. And that's um, one way out of here. You don't want to go there. Um, yeah, no. tr trust me, it was kind of hot. Um, but uh, yeah, we might want to hurry up. Hurry up and do what? I guess we uh, we can leave. Finish. Yeah, yeah. You know that's not going to be. Fit. We're already here. We might as well like. Well, yeah. Up. So let's walk. I'm a, I'm a for walking. Cool. Where? Let's finish up here, and then we can go to where we're going. You don't even know where you are. I, I just. Yeah. Okay. So oh. let's. All right, I'll, I'll I'll open the door, I guess. All right. <laughs> that is part one of walking. Um. Okay. So, once again, for the map, the map is not here yet, but we'll do theater of mind still. Um. Okay. You go to open that door. It does cautiously push open, hinges groaning. The space beyond is dim lit by an unnatural glow of ornate lanterns hanging from the ceiling, flames crafted from spectral fire, casting shadows instead of light upon the walls. It seems where that those flames aren't, there is light. Backwards in how they work, illuminating the sides of the room rather than the center. The floor is made of polished obsidian, reflecting those shadow-like flames like dark water. But the surface isn't level. It undulates. Um, there is a scent filling the air of aged parchment, a metallic tang, something, smell of something arcane, as if forbidden spells may have been cast here. There's a cloying at the back of the throat, 
in a manner disquieting of this stench. The room was filled with silence. Your steps on the floor produced no echo. Various shelves and tables are strewn about, cluttered with tomes bound in unfamiliar hides. Arcane instruments of disturbing design and artifacts that pull softly with light. The walls have tapestries depicting cosmic horrors and existential despairs. Scenes unnerving that seem to shift and change when not looked at. A sudden awareness hits you. You first, Eldros. There is something there. Nestled in the shadows is a figure. Indistinguishable from the furniture are fingers faintly draped in dark robes, still as death. What are you all doing? Says, there is someone here at the corner. I'm going to look behind us just in case. Is there anyone following us? No, no one is behind you that you can see. Go ahead and roll perception if you'd like to get a closer look. Dear. Oh, go ahead and roll perception if you would like to get a closer look. Sorry. Looking behind you carefully, there is nothing. But as you turn back, it seems that that figure Eldros pointed out seems to have taken their hand out of the light, disappearing into the darkness. There is a moment of dread as... None of you can see anything in that. Uh, unless, do you have Devil's so Sight, Terencio? My sword's still on. I have okay. Devil's Sight. You do have, dev- feet. You have yeah. Devil's Sight or Dark Vision? Devil's Sight. Okay, never mind. Terencio, you make out this figure sh- shrouded in this magical darkness. They appear disorderly, unkempt hair. Um, uh, a face that appears that their eyes are crazy, filled with some sort of odd and bizarre maneration to them. And they're wearing some sort of cloth. They stand up. It doesn't appear to you to be in some malicious way, but their movements are unnatural in some form or another. And they appear to be approaching you through this magical darkness. So they're moving it out of the dark? Or the dark's moving So this, this flame actually produces the opposite of light. And the corners of the room are illuminated. But the center is darker. So if my sword's lit up, does it cut through that? Nope. No, it is magical darkness. Um, okay, I... Looking directly at them, I hold a um, Eldritch Blast in my hand, and I say, stop where you are. Roll Intimidation. Oh. All right. I didn't even mean to intimidate. Oh, my God. Nice. As, as you're time. saying that, your Eldritch Blast like um, accidentally fires off and shocks the floor. Um, and everyone around you is suddenly like surprised by what you just did as you gather your composure and have to try to attempt to reignite it. It gives that person a chance to then speak to you all. You all hear this voice kind of echoing out. Surprisingly, this is what you hear. Oh, no worries. I'm not trying to do anything bad. Um, Who are you all and why are you here? Sorry if I startled you. I'm not trying to startle. 
Who are well, you? Well, well, I'm just speaking say. through the dark. Oh, I'm Hawkthorn the 15th. What? Hawkthorn the 15th. Does he look like the, um, that thing on the roof with ceiling? Uh, unkempt hair. They appear wily, but there's some resemblance. How many hawk thorns are there? Gradually, they step out of the shadows into the light, and you get a better image of them. They appear to be, um, as described. Let me see if I can find that. I'm not finding it. Oh, there we go. Found it. Where is it? Sorry. Okay, I can't find it. Don't worry. Just go in Discord. Go to um, Ralanon. Go to Changing Tower. They look closer to oh, no, no, no. Hawk Van Hallowtide. Where is this? Sorry. In Discord. Yeah. yeah. Go to Ralanon. Okay. Go to Changing Tower. They look closer to Hawk Van Hallowtide, the first image. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh, I don't know, but I know that I'm the 15th one. It's... So, what are you all doing here? How can I help you? And you see that one of his eyes doesn't quite open up all the way. And he constantly is squinting it. Um, uh, with one eye always open and looking at you all. Twisting his where, head erratically side to side as he speaks. Where exactly is he? Oh, here this is the home of the uh, Reaper. This is where this here is. Who's the Reaper? Oh, the Reaper? That's the Reaper. Is the uh, Reaper. Well, Andrios Biltane, the rightful heir to all of Biltane. But, but who's that guy in the portrait out there? That is the Reaper. Ambrose well, Biltane. Well, yeah, but you see, he looks a lot like this guy named Hawkthorn in Ralanon. Oh, yes, well, do you see, Ambrios has decided to take up this thing. He has created a better life for us clones and offers us a better life Hello. of salvation. Yes, oh, that horrible Hawkthorn is terrible, but Ambrios is different, and he's promised us salvation. So I have added to follow him. Are you his new followers? Wait, why are you asking me these things? Are you meant to be here? Yeah, that's we're why we're here, of course. You. We're seeing if you are, your wits are still with you. If we weren't meant to be here, why would we be here? Okay. Both of you can roll deception. Individually, or does one of us Maybe, do it individually? Yeah, I should just do it. But I guess it's too late. Why? No. I got a two. Okay. Oh, that's odd that you'd be asking about the very ruler that we all worship. Um, I'm very untrusting of you, but I guess I can give you a moment to speak for yourselves. Why are you asking me these questions, and what are you looking for? And it's because I'm not going to tell it to you. It's not going to be on me that is doing it. Well, we don't know everything. But we're meant to learn more by coming here. This is the library. It looks like one, right? No, this is the area that leads into the pins. Oh. Why are there books here? <clears throat> well, you know, the every Ambrios Biltane, the Reaper himself, needs areas to practice his magic and things like that, and you can't really just do it in the library, but you need books in order to do it. So some of them are here. That makes oh, sense, and, right? 
Oh, so he's the same Hawthorne and Relinon. Same Hawthorne, that evil motherfucker that enslaved me for years. No. 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 No, I've been given much more freedom to live my own life. Promises of decadence. All I need do is help the Reaper with what he wants. Oh, which clone is in Ralanon? Oh, probably the most recent Hawkthorn, the greatest failure out of all of them, the least intelligent and most <clears throat> manipulative, is the only one that he could control. Yeah, he seems like that. I'm clearly smarter than that guy. What are you doing here? I'm helping the Reaper with what he might need. Dark experiments or things of the sort. Oh, that makes sense. You know when he's going to come back? Oh, I'm not sure, but he did speak of plans coming up. That should actually be coming to fruition now, if I believe so. I haven't been oh. keeping track of the time. But he's supposed to be... Wait a second. Why are you asking these things? I just want to know when he was last here, because we were supposed to see him here. That's highly suspicious that you would be asking us, but how could you not know his... I am doubting that you are who you say you are. I doubt... Well, he wouldn't just give his his whole schedule to new recruits. He just told us to meet him here. Okay, between the two of you. Um, this time, one of you can roll it, if you wish. I, I have a for plus ten, if I, I have to you roll try good again. now. <clears throat> Why? What is this? Hmm. I'm afraid that I just can't trust your word. Well, hold on. Uh, well, how can we trust your word? Because you're telling us you're smart. But you haven't given us any evidence of that. Like, we haven't given you any evidence either. Right? Oh my goodness, you might be right. You're right. I think I, I got a sec. I show it to him. Look, the shape. Right? Yeah. This is a... What shape is this? It It's the shape of a sack. Right, but if I if I put it on the ground, what shape does the... Does the whole opening make? It makes an open sh sack shape. I'm not sure what you're getting at. It's what. Ah, uh, Terenzio, what what shape is this? It's round. Yes. It's a circle. The round shape. That one. How many sides? All right. The chef. I I love the teachings of. Geometry and you know shapes and all. Hi, what was your name again? What? Hold on, Hawthorne I think you used that. Fifteen. I feel See, like this conversation has seemed to left me. I feel like we were talking about something important, and then I got distracted by something. They usually do this. And my apologies. Uh, my name is Abdurus Knight. Practicer of magic that has heard about your master's inquiries in it, and I was able to see firsthand within the mazes his brilliant work. I was wondering, and we all were, wondering when his arrival was in order to see the man. Well, you know, he can't be here. Oh. He's a part of his master plan. It's coming to fruition. Like I said, you should know these things. That's why I'm suspicious of you all. Well, we understand that. Garabio is involved, correct? And also... Garabio's? The... What are you talking about? New Bilton? Have you not been listening to anything? He should be right now destroying New Bilton and creating a sea of obedient undead mind flayers. He goes quiet for like a second. Or I two. also go quiet. Like, I like Eldritch. Have you not like, been okay. listening to anything? Well, he's kind of cryptic. The, the problem, the, the, the problem with the 
situation was that we were informed about partial planning. We had admirers of his work and we haven't had a chance to meet him. So the totality of the plan hasn't been revealed to us. You're saying that he's not in Garaville. You're saying that he is currently destroying the city of Yugos. If I believe so, because it's supposed to be timing up when the celestial um, occurrence is supposed to happen, which I think he said is like in two days. So he's got to be busy getting ready. Um, there's no way he can't be here, can be here because that's the only time Vutur is definitely going to be gone. So that's when he has to do it. And I don't know how you haven't been informed of the situation. You know, I think I figured you tricked me. I think I figured it out. That's very rude to do these things. You should never, never do this. Well, I cannot can believe you? that. You must be the food for today. You escaped, no. and you're trying to get answers. Okay, then how would we know about the dragon? But that was that was really good work, by the way. Oh. Huh. You do know about the dragon. Yeah. Wait, what about this dragon? The dragon that um oh boy, what city were we were we all in? I need a map. The one so that just you were got Dabgrim. destroyed. Yeah. You were in Dabgrim. Yeah, uh Dabgrim. Yeah. We know that part of his plans were to rain down uh the mist and then a dragon would come out and he'd recruit some people there. Oh yeah, that it was fairly ingenious. All part of the plan. Um, Hang on, how do we know about that if we're food? Tell me about this dragon now. It's an undead dragon. I mean, what do you want to know about it? Oh, well, yeah, that that is true. Yeah. But no, but the dragon's an integral part of the plan. We just said we don't know the whole plan. That we're, we haven't been okay. privy to that information. You haven't this has gone on long enough. He, he takes out a wand. And he's ready to fight you all. What are you all doing? Wait, 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 wait. You still haven't answered my question. How many sides? I point to this to the circle. Does he look? It, how many sides? Um, how many sides? If you're so smart, how many sides, huh? Okay, then try and... I, there's... Um, well, I can't... It's too far away for me to see. <laughs> I tossed the bag at him. Can I place the wand out of his hand while he's looking at the bag? Sure, you can roll to attack with advantage. Just roll a d20 twice, and then we'll add your spellcast to Oh, God. Why? Oh, my God. Well, you have advantage. I know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's, even, that's even better. What's your... Spell casting um to hit five plus five. It's a ten. No, it's so it's no, it's plus five Wait. plus your proficiency. So it's fifteen. Um, let me see. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I got a one, a two, a four, a four, and a five. Well, luckily this guy's AC is quite low. Um, all right. So the bag gets tossed, he's looking down it. Suddenly, an eldritch blast shoots out, and his wand goes flying across the room. Hey, what are you doing? What? What in the world? Hey! Can I go run hey, and get the get wand? back in your cages! Don't Calm dare! Down. And then he starts going through the the darkness, and you see that it now is going through. That the eye that he had closed has gotten the light. He opens back up, and you see that he has one devil's eye, and he looks and grabs his uh, wand. I I said I ran to go get it. Um, it's okay. I guess roll initiative for anybody who wants to roll initiative. Yeah, I wouldn't let him just go walk over and pick it up. Well, that's what he's so he's no trying combat to do that. encounter. Um, no, just no. As soon as it flung out, I ran to go get it. Uh, <clears throat> let me see. Here I will. I'll just put in. Just put in this. All right. How do I roll initiative? My thing is, oh, there it is. 
Okay, now you shall be able to roll. Um, now you're going to roll high. There we go. So what's it? It's 20. Okay. Um, so it flew off into the magical darkness, so you can't see where the wand is, Tansac. But Chirp is up first. You see that he <laughs> seems to be... He was trying to do an attack, and it got blown out of his hand. Um, I, so as I toss the bag at him, and I see that the wand has... Oh, actually, shot out hand. we'll just swap order. Go ahead. Oh, is it not me? Or no, no, no then keep going, Eldros keep going. Goes. Oh, okay. He just rolled late. Not a big deal. He'll just go right after you. Uh, essentially, uh, I'll walk up to him and be over here, the other side of him. Huh. And I'm gonna can I use the the help action to help anybody hitting him or like restraining him or is is that how the help action works? Well, just specify what you're you want to distract him. If you distract him, people get advantage on attacks. Yes, uh, I, I'm gonna keep. Insisting on the on the circle and saying, um, "Well, because I know the answer. How many sides are on this?" We should put but, the bag over his head. No, no, no. Because the bag, the sack is on the ground for uh, for the circle. You're just being distracting. Get back! I right, let me get my wand back. But you are distracting him, though. Yep, that is my turn. Okay, uh, Eldros. Mm. This person is a crazy person. Uh, am I able to see him? Uh, yes, he hasn't gone back into the magical darkness yet. He's still standing All on right. the outskirts of it. So, uh, do I do this? It's such a high level. But at the same time, I'm kind of scared what he can do if he actually like gets his wits together. And I haven't used the spell. So I'm going to do it! Um... You go ahead and see that Eldros points his staff forward, and the tip of the staff starts to go ahead and kind of like glow this pinkish purple uh, hue to it. And um, okay, so essentially, I'm going to cast the spell, which is Feeble Mind. Okay, I'll post it right now. Oh, boy. So the target immediately takes 46 psychic damage and then must make a an intelligence saving throw. So he takes 12 psychic damage and then intelligence saving throw. Oh, I could have just clicked damage, but it's okay. Okay, I'll do the intelligence save. Oh, he did well. 24. <clears throat> well then, let me see. If it succeeds, the saving throw. Dang. This guy just ate <laughs> uh, an 8th level spell. Holy crap. Uh, that's it. Oh, that's the shit. damage. Um, how about... I don't want your cool spell to go to waste. No, uh, no, it's fine. It, it, in my eyes, is completely fine. Like I don't know how, how powerful this creature is. It's fine. I will say, in this circumstance, just bear with me here. In this circumstance, um, you can channel extra spell slot to get him to roll it again. You can use a fifth level spell slot just in this specific circumstance. This is not necessarily going to become the norm. Um, but remove a fifth level spell slot. I'll give him disadvantage. Alrighty. So since I, let me see. Yes, I do. Remove. So let's see. Rolling again. For his sake. Yeah, that's hey. definitely a fail. <laughs> so, essentially what ends up happening is that uh, the magic gets into his mind and it's almost like a very intense brain freeze. There's no, like, outward thing that happens. It's just, it's almost like if he drank gallons of freaking milkshake and his brain is just shut down. And what happens is that the creature's intelligence and charisma score is become one. The creature can't cast spells, activate magic items, understand language, or communicate in any intelligible way. You see the that can, however, 
instead of identify as friends, whatever. For 30 days. Um, 30 his days. His hands just flop over to his side. He starts just drooling and then, like, looks over at Chirp and then starts, like, puzzledly looking at you, getting his head way too close and then kind of just stumbles over on you and then corrects himself. And then looks over at the wall and looks just really confused for a moment. Then looks yeah. forward. Dro- drool just slopping from his mouth. He starts oh. like clawing his mouth. And then I guess we're not licking his drool. Getting any more information from him. No. Not, not for the next 30 days. No. Uh, what did you do to him? And, and at the same time. <laughs> He told us everything we needed to know at the moment. You built him is going to fall. It's falling. Well, they said two days. <clears throat> is there any way to... Um... In the meantime, however, you can't take him around. He still will recognize, well, uh, identify friends or, you know, people. Just oh. go ahead and put a blindfold on him if you want to get some information later. Um, He's essentially you know, out of the picture now. I feel like he didn't really know about time. Maybe. What do we do about New Bilton? And you see that kind of like it, like the thought rushes into his head again because he was like <laughs> posing, kind of like being like, okay, let's get information that that just bomb was dropped and now it's just like coming in. It's like, um... oh, Crap, the city is about to get destroyed. Hazarius, are you able to teleport there? <clears throat> um, I could try, but like I thought you were thinking is that it might not work in the Deadlands. Do you still have anything Never from there? Did what? Cedric or try each? and fail? <laughs> we did teleport here, though. Um, By the way, now that you have I will say anyone with the ability to teleport, so Eldros and Kazarius can roll Arcana to kind of figure out how in the world you got teleported here when maybe Cedric failed before to teleport. That's a good point. What happened? Because we weren't in the mist? So, but yeah, roll Arcana. We'll see. I think I who Cedric is. Just, just a point. Malfoy. What? That was a joke. <laughs> Is that dude in the house that helped us? <laughs> uh, okay. Would you? Uh, you can roll Eldris if you want. Eldris. Did did he say something? No. He I might be losing. Anything. Yeah, we might be losing his microphone. Oh, I see. There we go. I'm back. Sorry, it's just my headphones literally died. I heard Terencio say like, "Well, I guess he's not gonna reveal anything more," and then just did. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, Tansac asked if Kazuris could teleport you guys there. And then I prompted that now... That if it you, was possible. Yeah, now that you've all teleported while in the Deadlands, when you had talked with Cedric and he said that he failed to teleport out of it, you could roll Arcana to maybe understand why that might have happened that we were able to teleport. Okay. So you can roll Arcana because you're one of the people that has an ability which essentially teleports. Okay. I'll go ahead and just guidance myself for that just in case. Just Dang, it doesn't work. <laughs> Asrius also checked. So between the both of you, um, you would know this Eldros. It's a bit confusing to you, but you knew that um, your spell possibly just wasn't working because the trees weren't fully dead. Souls were inside of them. They were awakened. Um, that's how your spell might not have worked. But uh, Kazarius thinks on it, and between the discussion between both of you, 
you were able to teleport, but you teleported within the Deadlands still. So maybe you could teleport as long as you teleport to somewhere within the Deadlands. Huh. That'll help, I guess. Do we rename something from where we're trying to teleport? Um, well, that depends. I've gotten items, but they're, you know, that book from that crazy lady? I got that. So, like, what crazy lady? The one that tried to kill us, that has that doesn't like, matter with them. Something fucking on fire. Something like that, you have no idea where you would teleport to with that. It has to be yeah, something from the location. That's what and I'm that's saying. something that someone carries around a lot. So, Ooh, what about those heads? I got one of those floating heads. Yeah, maybe that, that could teleport. Maybe not. Maybe. Depends. That's, I guess you something can, dead is becomes an object, so you, yeah, I guess you could, could use work. what we just found, like the armors and stuff, guys. If you wanted to teleport back there, yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking of a way to get closer in that direction. Um. <clears throat> Maybe. Um, so if he's been planning this attack on your building, he's probably scouted it. There might be something from there in this mansion. If we keep um, looking. If we find the Necro Minicon here, I'm going to be surprised. Necro Necronomicon. No, the Necro Minicon. What? what? Yeah, it's a small one. That's like when we were a new built-in and Lightning Sphinx was with us and he stole this book from our library that this really fast dude in the shadow stole from us like a couple days after and then we found it at, remember that, we, we, we told you about the devil, right? Yeah. Yeah, well we were trying to track the book down because that's a bad necromancer book and we tracked it down to this underground auction where uh, right. the devil was. And, the one um, where you let the children in cages. Yeah, we'll see. If we if we didn't leave him there, we would have died because we were in his fucking underground auction. So what were we supposed to do? Free him and then die? Anyways, so that was my thoughts. Anyways, um, so yeah, then we saw the book there at the auction, and this one lady got it in Ralanon. So if we see it here, then that would be a surprise. <clears throat> There might be something. There has to be something. Yeah, who wrote it? Our hawk friend wrote it. Reek. Can I search this man so that he's drooling all over himself? Of course. Uh, roll investigation. Okay. You're going to get some obvious things. He has some coins. He has a necklace. Um, he has... So in total, it's just about... 16 silver worth, like some spare change type thing. Um, and he has a component pouch filled with tons of different components for spells. But that's about it, On along with his robe. And sadly, because he rolled that low investigation, while you're investigating him, you discover he's not even wearing underwear. Kind of <laughs> oh, gross. boy. Great. Perfect. I like grimace. He's kind of gross. He's just in a robe. Oh my god. I heard it sadly and then you cut out. Oh, good. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't I'm wearing underwear. you don't need to uh, know. Yeah, anyways. What about, about his wand? Huh? What about his wand? You're it's not, on his wand is it. in the magical darkness. Yeah, it's on the floor somewhere. You gotta well, I can. Can sure I can't see find it? it? Yeah, you could find it. Go for it. I, I uh, show Eldros the necklace that the guy was wearing and then the component pouch. Hmm. Component pouch is useful. Uh, how did the necklace look again? Sorry, like um, nondescript. Nondescript, insignificant. Okay. All right, all right. Um, he says, "Now I'll take my component pouch. Could always use one. It's oh, filled boy. with different components, which might or might not be of use to you." Let me add uh, a plus one necklace to me. You're going to wear um, another necklace. <laughs> the necklace becomes a trophy. I must wear it. 
I, I want to investigate the rest of the room because that's why we're here. Okay, roll investigation. Hopefully, Kazri's helps. Very hopefully, Kazri's helps. Sure, she would definitely help. Uh, all right. Looking through, you find many of these tomes. Um, and one of them specifically seems more valuable to Kazrius. It uh, has this, it's bound leather with this steel filigree on the front locking it and a keyway where a lock goes in. But as she gets close, close she sees that it seems to move a little bit. Out of curious, she's noticed it not doing anything. What do you want her to do? And I can pick it. It seems to be moving. The lock? And she threatens you that it might be not a book. It seems to be partially alive. Um, throw it on the ground? All right, you grab it quickly and throw it. Um, you hear this voice um, come from this book as it suddenly opens itself and unlocks itself. Ah, what the hell? What was that for? Never seen a talking book before. Is it talking in common? It's talking in common. Uh. <clears throat> Never seen an ugly face like yours before. Thank you. It's just distinct. Yeah, you're the ugliest looking one here. Hey, what's written in you? Lots of things. Lots of valuable secrets and magic. Forbidden cool. arts. I am a skilled and wise mage of the past. I could bring about the end of the world if I wished. Why are you How are you going to do that as a book? Oh, with my ways, I have this dunce who I am controlling somewhere around here. Wait a second. Oh, this guy? He's stupid. You turned him into an even greater idiot. Never thought it could be done. Uh, I'm still kind of unsatisfied because he never answered my question, but continue. Yes, well, he proved to be all over the place when it came to his reasonings and such. Quite... Uh, interesting fellow. However, you seem to be more well kept together, given him your current form. Roll deception. <laughs> <laughs> to flatter this book. <laughs> I will flatter this book. With also, my what, you, what did you ask, Jerp? Just to double check. Did I miss something? Out of, out of game, I will reveal oh. the answer to the question that I was going to blow his mind with and, like, have him lose in the logical debate. Uh, the answer was two. There are two sides to a circle, an inside and an outside. And that was my... That was the whole joke. Oh, oh, that one. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, okay, so Eldros, uh, you get this response. Why? Wow, quite smart. I am. It's quite amazing. Did you <laughs> want to be my new master? I might be able to help you with a few things. Well, what knowledge knowledge can you offer? I well, can impart the book. powerful spells and magic should you need it. Hmm. Well, how about in order we can... for me to become... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, please continue. <laughs> well, I was going to say is that... Um, what I would file right now, and he goes ahead and, like, may I pick you up? Why, of course. All right. I grab very gently, kind of like look at the book and say, So, what we require right now is information. Right now, your, well, roommate or neighbor, I'm pointing at the 
Ledger ruling guy. Um, is it in a predicament to lead or be a masterful person? However, I can go ahead and fill up that role. But first, question. New Bilton. You know about the situation going on there? I have the general logistics. I hear it. Things about it. What did you need to know? Well, we were told that New Bilton was trying to be attacked by the Reaper. Person that is all over this place, of course. You already know him. Um, that he is planning on doing it in two days. Anything else of interest that you know that you can tell me and us? Now, pertaining, well, so you only know that the attack is going to happen. That's all you're familiar with? That is about it. I suppose, seeing as how you seem to understand where value lies. I could share a little bit. Uh, he wants to go about it in unsavory means, not the style I would go. By using uh, this dragon he seems to have acquired and molding a um, undead elder brain to it to create this undead elder brain dragon to then infect the town with undead mind flare um, tadpoles and turn them into a slaves. You see that he, his eyes just open up and he said he where did he if you notice, where did he manage to find a Mind flayer, elder brain. Oh, long thing in the working. He met with some mind flayers who had their operations originally um, below the water. The Deadlands taking over this Koatoa group. And then from... I, I'm sharing a lot with you. I Maybe we should, you know... Do something a little bit... I don't know. This seems like a lot all at once. I hardly of know course. you. Of course, of course. Step by step. Um. Well, he goes ahead and looks at everyone else. Uh, he says, An elder brain, mind player. Dragon. Is it attacking you, built? like it. <clears throat> you know what? I'll look at my book, and you can have private time with your book, and then we can come together later and, and talk about what we find. Mr. <laughs> book, what's your name? Oh. Um, my name? Uh, Mr. Book. I'm sorry. You seem to be mistaken. Madam Book. Thank you. Kind of hard to tell. Madam Berkshire Avestro is the name. Madam Berkshire Avestro. Nice to meet you. Of course, and your name, sweetheart. Well, um, my name is Eldros Nightingale. I hope the rest of you can introduce yourself. Oh, Eldros Nightingale. No, I don't care about them. Let's talk me and you. <laughs> <laughs> Flatter me more, Eldros Nightingale. I can talk to you as much as you wish, but first, we're going to get need to get out of here. Um, pressing matters are happening at this current moment. Afterwards, I can tell you all about my adventures within the Deadlands and more. You know, it's rude to keep a lady waiting. Oh, shut up, <laughs> yeah. ugly one. I, but you're, you're right, but you shouldn't be speaking the ugliest one here. Who? You, of course. <laughs> I start pulling out my book of uh, Undead and try to see if I can find an Elder Brain in there. I start conjuring an Eldritch Blast. It's okay, Tarantino. It's... 
Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. And I'm beholding a raggedy old book that uh, thinks it's worth more than the pages it's written on. <laughs> it's it's fine. Don't worry. Um. Well, are you looking at the book? And it looks at Sherp. <laughs> um. Yeah, Sherp. You've already read this book multiple times. So just roll investigation with advantage, just to see how fast you find it, if it's there. It's going to take you a little bit of time, so you haven't found it yet. That's um, disadvantage. You guys can... Oh, oh okay. Well, oh, I mean... It's, well, it's still... It's, it's the still same just a thing? 10. It's like a 10, yeah. It's a 10. It's, not, it's hardly a difference. It'll take you a little bit of time, so you guys can keep role-playing while Chirp's looking for it. Well, if that's all that's left in this room, why don't we go check out the other ones? Isn't there more farther in? Yeah, there's like at least one or two more doors and an upstairs. So, We've Eldris, not. Nightingale, do you think we could get some moments alone? And maybe I'll share a few more secrets that I might have. I yeah. won't do it. No, no, he, I, uh, he's I, probably I, some hag. You would gotta think if they uh, stuck her in a book, because pages were nicer to look at. I wouldn't. Uh... <laughs> she that, what sounds if like had... someone's jealous. Please. Ugly one. What? I have so many questions. Did you have book parents? Like, where did she come from? No, I was trapped in this book. But yeah. I am an esteemed mage. I was trapped in this bird shell from birth. We can we can continue talking, of course. I'll tell you all about my adventures, like I said. Um, we will have our own private moment whenever the the moment arrives, of course. All okay. right. Can we like at this walk? point, um, <laughs> you would find chirp a section. That speaks of a elder brain undead dragon. So you would essentially, it would have this description of this horror, this untold um, horror, and basically its description describes if this ever were to happen, flee for your lives, you will never survive. Um, it has the ability to turn any of those around it that it. Um, spews its dragon breath on into mind flayers. Um, that's generally the gist you get of it. It seems to be short and curt, suggesting that maybe few people actually witnessed it and survived. Oh, hey, okay, yeah, the section in my book that talks about that brain you talked about is just, it just says we're gonna die. So, how about you talk to her? We uh, I show everybody how we're gonna die, and we'll talk in a second. You learn that yeah. it, it has a breath attack which infects people with tadpoles. Wow, <laughs> holy shit! But how do we kill it <laughs> by, by fighting it and avoiding every chance that it has of infecting us? And Quite so, frankly, I don't know how we would be able to do both things. I will say, you can lead us to believe it. If it infects a bunch of commoners, it does turn them into vampiric mind flayers. So, just be careful with that knowledge. That's lovely. Well, this thing doesn't exist yet, right? He, the other guy said he had to attack new building first of course you wouldn't know dumb ugly one as said the reaper is waiting for the opportune moment it's all ready as soon as vutur is distracted with the celestial um agenda then the attack will begin Can I see that book? No, um... Just, we, I we, just want to see it. 
No, no, not now. We could. You can see it later. You don't have to worry about it. Um. Go have your chance. Can I roll history to remember if I ever met like the main dude of New Bilton? Um. I can just tell you straight up that. Eldros did actually meet with a representative family of New Bilton. And no, this... I have. Oh, yeah, but I'm just going to give you a quick recap, basically. Okay. Um, generally, this this might help you so that you might not have to recall this. Um, they are run by a heads of families who basically were the most important figures that helped rebuild this refugee colony that became New Bilton. Um, so they took heads of families who were important for farming or other industry, and they created a council. So Eldris met a member of this council, who then he convinced to write a letter, which you hopefully got delivered to Quavir that might be assisting them with refugees or whatnot. Um, you're not sure how that might have gone. But that's generally what you would know. There's no main figurehead. There is a council of different heads of families representing each, you know, part of the city. Yes, and as for the Quavir situation, because we've been in the Deadlands for so long and it has taken priority, we don't have a guarantee that New Bilton has reinforcements at all, so... Oof. Oh, you want to do that? Okay. Yeah, um, Eldros could describe to you uh, what they look like to the best of their ability, and then maybe you could Get that spell through, Jansak. Sorry, I cannot. I was explaining what I wanted to do. So I was saying that, yeah, so if I knew them, then I could literally warn them right now to get out. So. You could, yeah, Eldros could attempt to describe the features of that person as best as they possibly could to you, so that you might be able to contact them. But you're saying I did not meet any of them. You did not meet them, no. Oh, okay. Well, um, let's see. To we met. Your... We met that um. Known to oh shit, same plane of existence. We're not in that. Yep, we are technically still. It's just an invasion. Okay. We met that shopkeeper that. Sounded... I would know that it does seem to kind of mess with it, like it messes with teleport, but maybe not with a cryptogram. Okay. Um. Well, hey, I can test that right now by sending something to one of you guys. Well, we're right here. Oh, yeah, we're in the same one. Yeah. Um, well, either way, I can try to warn them literally right now. Well, if you can, go ahead. Whatever spell you have, what do you need? It's the same I, word. I, no, it, I thought it was like seven characters. A small, yeah, se seven characters, yep. So I need a few pieces of paper. I, I assume I can find pieces of paper. Can I use like paper from a book or something and just write on that? Um, sure. Just try to be. You could just keep doing that on new sheets of paper. It will all just come in is every six seconds, right? Um, yeah. But it says it needs. I should have all yeah, the materials that a, I need. Basically, just a piece of paper, and we will. We already homebrewed it. That you got some like magical based ink that you used your alchemy to sort of concoct so that you can do this um, spell. All right. Um, undead in two days. Um. All right, roll a d hundred. Evacuate, evacuate. Roll a d. That's all I can get. Hurry, okay. All right, that's I so. Think... Roll four d hundreds. Does anyone think I? So roll three more d hundreds. Yeah, it's just not letting me. Oh, oh wait. Okay. It says it's not a valid chat message. Oh, that's weird. Slash but I just did it. Just try it again, I guess. Uh. 
That's weird. I can't even click the button. Oh, here, I'll roll it for you if that's okay. Is that oh, wait, okay? hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. Oh, okay. So, 34, 88, 83, 10. Okay, good to know. They they appear to disappear, all of them. You're not sure if they've reached the destination or not. I was about to ask if you all wouldn't mind. It is 11.22 if we could leave it around here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a good I agree. point to stop, for sure. Okay, uh, any afterthoughts for the game? Well, this got a whole lot intenser. Yep. <laughs> I think um, the surprise uh, encounter with the man here was, has made the plot thicken, so to speak. Yeah. Also, I'm sorry if you all wanted to keep talking to him. I just thought a feeble mind would be really useful for a spellcaster right now. <laughs> I think that was a good call, especially... He was trying to fight. Yeah, once once he pulled the one on us, the, it was game. I will say, out of game, that, yeah, I think that just thematically was the right moment for him to fail, so I really wanted him to fail that. That was just thematically a good call. Yeah, that is a cool spell. It's really deadly. It's a cool spell. <laughs> <laughs> 30 days, that's ridiculous. But yeah. Strong. And only at the end of, like, the 30 days do they get, like, <laughs> the chance to do the saving throw. It's yeah, horrible. Not in that. GG. <laughs> yeah. New plan for all the big bads. I well, guess X. I X their intelligence, and oh, you no. guess that. Oh, that's <laughs> smart. That's clever. That's yeah, smart. that could However, work. Unless they, it, well, you burn through all of their legendary saving throws, um, then you yeah. do it. Well, that helps, though. Yeah, however, Feeble Mind, the really effed up thing, right, is that their score is a 1, right? And they're forced to make a saving throw again while their score is a 1. Oh, no. Oh, this guy might forever be an idiot. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's so deadly. Wow, because that's depressing. He has to roll like a he, nat 20. Yeah. What's your saving throw? It. It's like a 18 or 19 or something. So, because when I'm holding my staff, it is a uh, 19 when I'm holding my staff. So, Whoa. basically, he still has advantage. He still has, he still is proficient with it. So, it's yeah. possible because he gets the plus three. Wait. So he gets but it's like minus, minus three. Yeah. But it's minus three because he's one. Let's see. So it's minus two. Wait, so it's it can't be impossible. Like I think I think that I guess one, only Nat 20. Yeah, I think that a one, I think, is a minus five to your intelligence. It's a minus five, but he has a plus three. Exactly. So I would just say Nat 20 is the only thing. Yeah. Even though I technically guess that Nat 20 would just... be 18. Yeah, it's not impossible. It's just hard. Oof. Oof. I don't want to be in his shoes. I'm so, I'm so sorry, dude. But I don't want to be in your shoes. You tried to attack us. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he deserved it. <laughs> he deserved it. Oh, but the bomb of you built and getting attacked. Holy crap. Two days yep. away from being attacked. That's oh, yeah. Insane. you Now you know what that thing on the calendar was this whole time. <laughs> yeah. What if we find we find this Rutor guy and we tattle? I remember Tansak, you were like, why is there a note on the calendar? And I was yeah, like <laughs> I just saw that again when I was like screenshotting it. And I was just like, Oh, nothing to worry about. You wanna just call Vutur? You mean like you wanna just like hit up a god, be like, Hey man <laughs> Your god your boy's uh disobeying you. Go go spank him. Is he disobeying he, though? He's waiting yeah. for Vutor to be distracted doing something else. Yeah, fair. Dang. And then we That's help the theory. We help the Lich kill the Reaper, and then we betray him. 
<laughs> so the question is, save New Belton or track down the celestial thing? E. I'm done okay. with save New Belton. <laughs> I don't know how we could get there in time, even if we wanted to. I think the teleport scroll, either that or we could try something else. Now that you know, you can teleport, teleport out. within the Deadlands. So maybe you teleport to somewhere that's close to the exit, and then you teleport yeah. again. Like, in my eyes, how we would have to do it to, like, get there the fastest, because I'm looking at my spell slots, or I'm about to look at my spell slots right now, and we'll have to teleport, like, get a long rest, at least, to be, like, the peak condition, and mm -hmm. then I can transport via plants since I have been to New, new Bilton. I guess the fastest, fastest way to do it, in my eyes, and we still, like, lose a day. You would have to have a living plant, though. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so I would say probably to the Artificer's Place, you probably have. Did you pick up anything there? I think Kazri's picked up something but from there. The, the rock. We grabbed oh, yeah, duh, the rock. Or the the yeah. rock, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, just, you teleport there, then you can easily from there get out of the Deadlands and and go there. Uh, I, I was just thinking of... track again. Yeah. No, no, because then we can just teleport if we grab something here, right? Yeah, you can that, grab something oh yeah, from here. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hey, yeah. And you already have stuff from the lab, so you can go to all places now, basically. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's not as bad. Like, I was thinking of teleporting to, like, the exit where we first enter the Deadlands, then walking out, then transport via plants, without that work, too? But uh, if... you just don't have something from that location, that's all. So it would be, yeah, uh, like, it could fail. I think... Yeah. Bag and with the label of rocks. That's yeah. what I'm gonna need. Mm. Yeah, you should. And from what we understand, right? Like, so I wanna, I wanna, kind of get the situation clear. Like the the elder brain dragon is like complete, right? That's what uh, you've been told, basically. Our <laughs> friend Pharrell oh. saw it. And yeah, it was a big. Oh bag. no, that wasn't it. That wasn't yeah. it. <laughs> no, that Something wasn't it. Entirely. That was yeah. a part of the transition to make it. Oh well, that was already terrible. So if this so is that worse... was that was because it's been like four months or something, and all of it oh. building up. Um, mm -hmm. I, do you want me to just straight up tell you out of game, or I don't. Think, I think that now you're just going to be in combat mode, so you're not going to really try to necessarily investigate more. So I could just kind of tell you how it happened. I mean, I want to no, investigate no, no, like, the rest of this place. Like, we're, like, yeah, we're going to investigate so maybe. Okay, so you are going to look through notes and stuff. Okay, well then it can happen yeah, naturally. Exactly. Um, no, but I can picture it. I can picture it because it's, it's scary. That monster, oh my god, when I saw it, like, I don't know its staff or anything. I, I just saw the art piece and it looks so scary. It's one of the scariest dragons I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah, when I saw that thing like two years ago, I was like, oh shit. The what? It's like, where did you see this? It's a literal, it's like a new, from the new material. Oh. Um, the dragon book, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's scary because Undead. It, like, this could kill us. Like, this could legit if a tackle enters us, we're done. Like it's it's over. It's it's finito. It's not a holy crap. Um. Unless. Unless. Unless, unless not a, like the tadpole enters us and we're not a BG three. We're we're not. We don't get time. We done. <laughs> Doesn't it still take like? No, they they kind of said if he wasn't kind of fucking well with it. It would turn us kind of quickly. I thought it was still like day, several days ago. No, I don't think so. Uh, they they all assumed that pretty much anybody that had the tapo would is immediately it, turn. Is it considered yeah, because... a disease? No, it, it's not. It's technically not a disease. It's a parasite. Yeah, yeah, it's a parasite that's transforming you, right? So it's not even a condition in the game. It's just you're I will say though, them. for example, if you succeed the saving throw. Then likely you might not get infected with the tadpole, even if you get hit by the attack, for example. Yeah. So just never it's fail. I mean, I still don't want to, <laughs> like, you know. Just never fail. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want to chance that. In my eyes, right? Like, I don't know specifically, but I think because the siege is happening with the dragon, I can imagine that the tad tad will do it instantly. Right? Like, that's the idea. Right? To bring the, the, the freaking vampiric mind flayers in the city, propagate them like, you know, just, I don't know, replicating cells. That, that's the only comparison I can put. Um, and just strike new build codes. This dangerous. Why are we here? Why are we fighting these people? <laughs> because you're like, oh, by the way, all of you are level 16 now. As soon as you get an next long oh. rest. Oh, oh wow. snap. What um, do we do? Milestone and creature killing. All of it combined. I just didn't update it. Oh, okay. Yeah, milestone and creature killing. Trying to figure out what I need then. Yeah, so, but next long rest. So as soon as you get that long rest in. This is cool. This is cool. This is cool. Oh, Be excited. New level for everyone. Yo, Kazra's going to come timing. back and be like, yo, like, why are we heading out as like the uh, Elder Brain Dragon? It's like, okay, understandable. <laughs> Dang. Do you guys get new spell slots in 16th? No, I know. I got to share. But thank you so much, DM, for running as always. Yeah. Uh, it's 17th for ninth level, so I'm so excited for you all. <laughs> oh, ninth level soon? Oh, shit. Yeah, that's actually crazy. Wish spell coming into play. I'm afraid of that. Yeah, you should be. Ooh, that would be cool. I wish for a million gold pieces. Thank you. <laughs> Adding up. Well, right. there's, like a, there's like a table and how it works, so if you go for something like a billion then less percent chance, but it could still happen, or it could be really fucked up. Why don't why don't all these mages just sit around all day wishing on things? Because <laughs> it, the, if you wish for something that is out of the parameters of the spell and it works, you have like a percentage chance that you can never cast the spell again. Also, oh. Im imagine if this guy's waiting for Boonser to go get busy with someone, or like, go get busy with something. What if someone knew you could cast Wish and they were trying to kill you, and so if you use your wish to, like, I wish I had, like, a dog named Poodle or something. And and then you don't have your wish spell that day, right? That guy can just kill you. That could be a, a, a justification, too, I think. And the spell has, it just straight up has limitations. Like, even the yes. more powerful spells, they have a chance to not work. Yeah. Like, Wish is great because one of the guarantees that will make the spell, like, useful is that you can replicate any other spell, right? Like, so, like, if you don't have a spell slot or you want to cast a specific spell, you're like, I wish to cast this specific spell. And it's like, okay, good. No repercussions there. But if you say, I want to revive someone or summon this thing, it's like, oh, well, you have a chance to never cast a Wish again. <laughs> oh, that is... Yeah, ninth level, you also get the one that can revive someone who's been dead for a long time, too. True so resurrection. That's a, True yeah, that's a crazy, scary, powerful one. Mm -hmm. yeah. That mummy skull you picked up, you can... True resurrect. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> what the mummy but was waiting I... for this whole time. Then I lose my drinking cup. As it say. <laughs> Dang. Uh, I, thank it's... you so much. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. Well, excited to see what happens. Yeah, excited too. We won't get together next week, but we'll get together the week after. Yes. Two weeks sounds good. Um, Ready? quick question: Do any of you guys know exactly where you want to go? I'm guessing you're gonna obviously explore this mansion, stuff like that. <sighs> Just so I have a general I... idea. Very quickly explore the mansion. Yeah, oh, we're like. Yeah. Can we just fly above? Like the clouds where the mist isn't. Yeah, but it would take so much time to get to new build. It, would take it is slower. Time. No, yeah. I mean yeah. I hear what Tansak's saying. He's to saying teleport. Fly above teleport. Yeah, never said you couldn't oh. try that. Yeah, we could actually. Uh, I, I can't. I can't cast spells while while in shape though. No, no, but Kazrius can. Your wild shape. She cast teleport. Above the and we also have above the yeah. Yes, see, very wise, Tansac. Yes. 
that could theoretically based off of her role that would work that's smart okay yeah that could work okay and then honestly if we wanted to do something kind of crazy we could do like if we have a teleport scroll now right yeah so really anytime we want we could just teleport back on top of the I oh, know, I guess we would need oh, something from on top yeah. of the mist. There we need a part of a cloud and we can't get that. No. Well, we can think about it over uh, in the two weeks. Thank you so much, DM. I'm going to go ahead and get ready for bed. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for the session. DM. Have a Peace good out, night. Man. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Terencio. <laughs> you're totally gonna kill that book <laughs> i you remember the very like when it was just me you gave me that arsonist tinder box <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah I've been, I've been waiting for something it'll come in handy sometime oh, yeah. and it Wait, might what's its like ability it lights it can light anything on fire anything on fire yeah yeah that would be funny oh yeah even a magic book yeah it would work I wonder if it would set an elder brain dragon on fire. I don't remember the details of it. Do you have the description? Maybe it's like anything that can be lit I on fire. I think a dragon has resistance to fire. It's an elder brain dragon. It's um, an the only undead elder brain dragon. An otherwise innocuous tinderbox that sets fire to everything, flamm flammable or not, in a 20-foot radius. Oh, yep. Yeah, so, yep. Everything. But then the, the question is, will it spread? I guess. You'd have to find out. But the book gave you the same energy you gave it, to be fair. Not, no, it started it. No, you called the book ugly first. I did not. I don't remember that. The book called us ugly first. Oh, well... That is, the book is supposed to be obnoxious. <laughs> so I'm much better it, looking than the book. Eldros was the only one who flattered it. I probably would have rolled another two if I tried, so. Yeah, that's funny. You got a 20. So basically the book's just going to tell you stuff you want to know. Oh, yeah, you got information from the book. Yeah. Damn. Well... That's cool. It was fun. Happy to see where this goes. So yeah, yeah. but that was also like a brilliant idea, um, uh, Tansac, to go outside of the mist. Yeah. Yeah. That was always a, a thing. You guys just had to kind of figure it out. Wait, there's no mist down here. There, um, yeah, no mist in, in here, but you're still in the zone of the okay. deadlands. Like he can. He was able to detect it's still the Deadlands. Maybe we should have waited to send the note. Well, I guess we're leaving anyway to go warm them. So, yeah, yeah, so I guess you're going to do that instead of going to the Artificer's home and then traveling from there to... Um, yeah, New probably Milton. be faster. Okay, well, hopefully you guys come up with a good plan. I'm just going to tell you this. If you try to fight um, an Elder Brain Dragon who can turn people into... Mind players with a bunch of commoners in a city that they can turn to add to the fight against you, that would probably be quite difficult. So hopefully you have a plan. Yeah, I don't think deal we can with do that. that. We just make sure there's nobody in the city. That's maybe a potential option. Or we give everyone tinfoil hats. <laughs> what realistically, if someone was wearing like a full like steel like metal helmet how would a um they like, completely covers their head you how well, would the parasite have to get be in? openings for them to breathe yeah but they would be like pinholed um it's an extremely powerful attack probably it can break through armor itself 
It's a I dragon thought, breath uh, attack. You know, it's supposed to be. But I mean, I, the way I just looked it up, the way I read it, it just exhales a stream of brine, which is just water, or like nasty water filled with tadpoles. Well, if you think about Pokemon, the uh, um, scald effect uh, is yeah, water, but and it can, is it, like, burn stuff extremely hot. Maybe it's just extremely hot brine that can melt through armor. Wouldn't that just kill them? It Yeah, it does damage too, though. And if you die, do you still transform? You'd have to find out. I will say, it's not going to be exactly as you read the description. First of all, it's an undead right. version. So that's already homebrew. Second of all, it's homebrew. It's going to be extremely powerful, obviously, um, but I am altering it for our game. Okay. So it's going to be something. It's not like you're going to go in this fight with 0% chance ever of winning, and you just, it's guaranteed TPK. It's, obviously, it's not going to be that. Not to say you couldn't TPK potentially, um, depending on your actions. I think fighting it's a dumb idea. Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's your call, what you do. I think fighting it is a really dumb idea. You could just leave um, Vermiliad and let them all turn into vampiric mind flayer minions. And, and if they're uh, not going to spread that shit. Screw off, and then it'll become like a sea battle of them trying to take over the world while you all leave it to different continents. All right, plan. We let them destroy new buildings, and then we lure the drag. The, their obvious next target is Quavir, which is a giant cave. We lure the dragon into the giant cave, drop the mountain on it. Well, from I had suspicions that for some reason there was a dragon underneath Ralanon. So there's always like trying to see if that's real because I think one of our spells if we have um I think it's red leather armor I I think it's me or someone has a spell to be able to detect the dragons no I think just one of its latent abilities is it can detect it I don't know I google I I searched this up once so we could like literally go and try and find the fucking red dragon's dragon Hmm. Right. What leads and you then, to suspect that? Why under Ralanon? Because that church was spooky. Ah, yes, the church. And uh, it, it was just spooky. Okay, and I, I it's probably there. Yeah, that, that was what I wanted to do, but then we got, I never got to do that. But um, knew we could have a dragon fight. That would be entertaining. Um, but you have two days, so you have to be very strategic on how you use your time. Oh, I saved us some time. I think we need to get as much information as possible from this place first. So there was Prepare. also a possibility that you guys don't end up going here. So interesting that, um, or that you even interact with this guy. So I don't know. It's just cool. D&D is cool. D&D is cool. I think we need to make a giant bomb. Hmm. I was actually expecting that the way that you were playing, that maybe you just um, don't even aren't even involved with the fight. So it's cool that you ended up catching him, and still have two days. Fucking, and also the book said that uh, Reaper dude is con no no no. Also, when the fifteenth said that Reaper dude is controlling the one in Ralanon because he's easier to control, so he's still a bad guy. No, uh, Hawkthorn the fifteenth said that the Reaper dude is giving the clones a better life, and that the evil guy is controlling the dumb one. I.e., there's a possibility that um, the dumb one. The mage that you met in Raladon in the tower isn't connected to the Reaper. There's a possibility, even though they look the same. 
there's a possibility that they, they are working together or that maybe they're the same person and that Hoctor in the 15th was manipulated and he's dumb. But based off what he said, they aren't working together and that the Reaper, the, the guy in the tower is different than the Reaper. I don't know. He always gave me bad vibes, and this isn't helping. No, yeah. What you can tell, based off of the image, the Reaper is obviously the guy, or a clone of the guy. From the painting. Yeah. Maybe the book knows. Yeah, you can read more of it. Okay, that was cool. I'll stop. That. I forgot to stop the recording. Oh. Um.